let a couple people get in here. We got a good one today. We're gonna be going over how to raise your masculinity, how to become more masculine, and how to take charge of your life. Remember the other day I asked, you know, what were some titles do you guys wanna, uh, you get to choose the title of the, the next video. And the ones I kept seeing pop up, I'm like, okay, this falls under every rule that I have that I follow, you know, that I also believe that other men need to live by. And then I saw another one, how to stay disciplined. So we're gonna cook on that one. One more minute. Let me shout out all the bros though. Lone Wolf was good. Tate was popping. James Nowiski, let's go. SSJ Llamas was good, gang. Ninja the Real, you can't lose, I can't lose. We both can't lose, brother. Steve A, we live. We live, we live. Blue Steel 920, we about to turn up. Malik's Fitness was good. Corey 2S is yo. Yeah, we about to cook on this one. All right, let's get it cracking. Let's start off with the introduction. It's your boy, Justin J, coming to you with another live stream. Let's cook, boys. Let's cook. So the topic of tonight's live stream, 10 rules that every man must follow in life and how to stay disciplined. All right. So a lot of dudes don't have a standard of how they want to live their life. OK, they need a standard. If you had a standard, you would know how to stand on your own two feet. You would know how to not accept bullshit. You would know how to deflect it. Most dudes don't know how to do that. That's why everything seems like it's a struggle sometimes. Once you have a standard and you live by a set of rules, nobody can come in between you and what you have going on. If more dudes understood this, they would understand the true power that they possess as a man. Now, in this live stream, we are going to talk about dating and relationships, too. You guys can send in a question. I'm going to do my best to answer all the questions. If you want to make sure I don't ignore it, okay, just send a super chat. I don't care how much it is. Guys, I have the links in the description. If you want to donate, because I know YouTube takes a certain percentage, you can send a donation to my Cash App, my Venmo, or my PayPal. I don't care how much it is. Anything is appreciated, all right? So remember, we are going to talk about dating and relationships. I'm going to answer those questions, all right? But yes, I do do one-on-one -on -one coaching calls. Follow me on Instagram. It's Justin J underscore. DM me, I will send you the, fl the flyer. I do half an hour, an hour, and any other time you need over that, I do that as well. So let's get into number one on this list. Very important. And I'm gonna ask you guys some questions, okay? Number one. Be unapologetically yourself at all times. You know, when, especially when we're talking about women and dating in this space, right? It'll be like, oh, well, women are drawn to nonchalant dudes. Okay. Or, you know, women are drawn to dudes who don't care. Okay. And we get that. But the whole point of being nonchalant is being unbothered, being indifferent, not giving a damn, sticking to the script, paying attention to your mission, your agenda, not worrying about whatever the hell is going on. And especially not this chick okay so that's not trying to be something that's something that you should already be it should be a part of you so what I mean by being unapologetically yourself okay put a one in the chat right now right if you care about what others think of you let's do this right now put a one in the chat if you care about what other people think about you put a two in the chat if you don't give a damn about what people think about you
Okay, so I saw a bunch of ones, okay? I saw a bunch of ones. Why do you care about what other people think about you if you're always being yourself? If you're unapologetically yourself, you don't care if somebody likes you or they don't like you, right? Why do you care what other people think about you? I don't care, I don't wanna hear about your mother, your father, your cousin, your family members. I mean, people out in the world in general, you care about what people think about you, but how you can't do that and be unapologetically yourself. You understand? Got to open up your brains here. You have to be unapologetically yourself. See, when you're unapologetically yourself, you love yourself. You're going to love the person that you see in the reflection. When you look in the mirror, you're going to love that person. If anybody doesn't care enough to get to know you, okay, kick rocks. See how you will be affected? When you start getting affected by other people's bullshit, it starts making you move differently. That's why people are always like, well, how do I move? I don't know how to move in this situation because you're not unapologetically yourself. This is a, the number one rule that I have on this list. You have to be unapologetically yourself because look, when somebody doesn't like you, somebody thinks different from you, it won't be that big of a deal because you know who you are. You love who you are. So why wouldn't you be yourself at all times? You see, I teach dudes how to be charismatic, smooth, charming, have a mouthpiece, but that's all a part of who you are at the end of the day. Once you perfect that, that's who you are. These are just simple things you have to work on. Okay, so let's say you like playing video games, right? And a girl comes around and she's like, I don't want you to play video games. I think that's for losers. So you're gonna change up who you are to accommodate and acquiesce to this woman? That's what you're gonna do. I don't wanna play Madden anymore. I don't wanna play 2K anymore. No, 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 no UFC 4, no UFC 3. I'm not playing any of that because I care about what you think about me to the point where I won't be myself. That's cool, babe, right? That's what you're gonna tell her, right? Hello? Is that what you're gonna tell her? Let me see some people in the chat. Is that what you're gonna tell a chick? Exactly. Hell no. Nah. I'm going to do what I want to do because I'm myself. You understand when you're unapologetically yourself, you are instantly thrown into a leader position. You ever wonder why you can go to a job, not know a damn thing about it and just know everything in the first month or two? Grown men who play video games are weirdos. Okay, good. They're weirdos. They're weirdos to you. Okay. So, like I said, but see, even still, see, somebody, you would think that they're a weirdo, but that person doesn't care. They're still going to do what they want to do, unapologetically themselves, right? If you were unapologetically yourself, I would see a picture of somebody in a little circle. I wouldn't see a blank slate. You love who you are, right? Okay, so when you're unapologetically yourself, nobody can come in between anything. See, somebody else's opinion, you don't care about it. Because what side are you on? What side are they on? See how that works? In live timing, I show you. Number two, put yourself first. Your physical health is very important, and that's a part of putting yourself first. I'm tired of seeing dudes all around being just wishy-washy, thinking that they don't have to be in shape. All right, get out of here, get out of here. Okay, I'm tired of dudes being just thinking they could be whatever, be sloppy, not be proper, not be on point, not put their, take their health seriously. When you look good, you feel good. That's exactly why people are always depressed, always feeling some type of way. Well, what do you eat? What do you eat? You're putting your body through through stress doing a bunch of BS when you could be putting it through the good stress of letting those muscles get bigger, getting those gains in. But you don't put yourself first. You know, I'll have some mac and cheese today and then, you know, later on I'll have some Cheetos. And then after that, I'll have like three cheeseburgers and some french fries, wash it down with some soda. I'm putting myself first. I love myself. I'm doing what I want to do. But is what you want to do the hard shit to do? Because when you do things the hard way and you don't take the easy way out, you're putting yourself first. I don't think enough dudes pay attention to this. Put yourself first. 
Stop worrying about what everybody else is doing. See, everybody else just joins the crowd. They join the herd of sheep. This whole term woke, nobody's woke. Nobody's woke. You don't stand on your own shit. You don't put yourself first. And see, here's the thing about putting yourself first. Everybody's always trying to take care of everybody else. But see, if you're not good yourself, what good can you be to someone else? Think about it. Get the likes up. I'm going to pause right here. Get the likes up or just leave. I don't understand this. Two more, let's get it. Yes, that applies to relationships too. One more, let's go. Well, I would never like ghost watch somebody. I don't get it. Let's go, one more. There we go. Okay, so putting yourself first. See, there's a healthy amount of being selfish. I don't get it why people think that when they hear the word selfish, they already go to something negative. It's negative to be selfish. It's self-centered to be selfish. You can't be selfish. What about the kids that are starving in Africa? What about this? And what about the babies that are crying? No, 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 no. You have to be selfish. You have to put your goals first before anything. You have to make sure that you're good, your mental health, men's mental health. See, this is the thing that nobody really takes seriously. And this is why a lot of dudes lose themselves in others, in relationships, in other people. Because you don't put yourself first. You don't get to know yourself better. You don't have a healthy sense of who you are. You don't know who you are because you're too busy worried about everybody else. But if you took the time to put yourself first, everything would be crystal clear. You have to put yourself first. Hopefully I'm getting through to somebody, right? Because you can put all your time, attention, and energy into someone else all to have them spit in your face. And then you're sitting there like, wait a minute. I, I put in all this work. Why did I get this outcome? It's because you were not paying attention to what you wanted. You were not paying attention to your agenda and your mission. Nobody comes before that. And anybody who's going to preach to you, you have to put people before your purpose, put people before your mission. No, 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 no. It's cap. They're not telling you anything conducive to your life and in your situation. They're not telling you anything conducive for your life and to your situation. Straight up and down like that. Things in my life started going shit. Things in my life started going perfect. As soon as I started putting myself first, no more friends, no more throwing parties at my house, no Dutch guts all over the floor, beer cans in the trash, because I wanted to be the life of the party and throw parties. No, 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 no. Got rid of them, put myself first, got baki, got shredded. Now they can't hang with me no more. But you think that would happen if I was still trying to entertain and be on somebody else's timing to have fun? No, put yourself first, because like I said in my, I think it was the other live stream, a lot of you dudes, I don't know if you have bills, if you have some, a lot of stuff going on, nobody's coming to save you, nobody's keeping your lights on, nobody's keeping the refrigerator full, nobody's putting gas in your tank, nobody's doing any of that, you have to do all of that, so why not put yourself first, because all you, you are all you have at the end of the day, right? See, this is a part of boosting that masculinity. See, there's no really su there's no such thing as toxic masculinity. There's going to be words that, you know, people use asshole, jerk, self-centered, narcissist. Yeah, garbage. Get it out of here. Worried about myself and myself first. See, nobody likes a dude that puts himself first. You know why? Because that dude nine times out of ten is super confident strong in his spot, can't be knocked off his square. And that's exactly how it's supposed to go when you're a masculine, confident man. This is very important to your life and your mindset. Remember that, let that sink in. You have to put yourself first, okay? Can you take care of loved ones and have people's back and have friends and all that stuff? Yes, but at the end of the day, you still need to put yourself first. Okay, number three, mean what you say and say what you mean. 
A lot of dudes walk around in life talking about a bunch of nonsense that doesn't amount to anything. Excuse me. A lot of dudes are disingenuous about what they want. They have a strategy to get to what they want, but it's just very weak. No, 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 no. Mean what you say and say what you mean. See, nothing can get misinterpreted. Nothing can get misconstrued. And here's the thing, too. Everybody always wants to know how to deal with a toxic person. How do I deal with somebody who's coming at me and I don't like the energy? You speak up for yourself and you only say something once in any situation that you're in. And you mean that shit when you say it. And if they don't take it seriously, well, then it's part of my back. You turn around and you get to stepping. Never argue with a fool, bro, because there's only going to be two fools if you do that. Just mean what you say and say what you mean the first time. That's for anybody that walks into your life. They're not a part of your program. They don't want to be a part of your program. They don't want to be on your side. You know, what you say, y'all, I'm not dealing with that. Get that goofy ass shit out of here. A lot of dudes adapted this way of talking that's not direct. Oh, well, I think, oh, well, um, you know, I'm not sure, but some people are always thinking, I think, I feel. Women say that, I feel like, I feel, I think, I feel. What do you actually know? See, when you, know lot, you are going to say what you mean. But it all comes down to what you know. What do you know up here? A lot of dudes don't know anything. They're just drifters. They're drifting through life. So they have this indirect upon exactly what you don't want. Speaking up for yourself and saying it one time. Put a one in the chat if you can hear me. Man, I'm here, you'll never lose me. You say something one time. I said in a video, if you're in the wind and the wind is blowing, and somebody's like, what'd you say? What'd you say? You can repeat yourself. Other than that, you're not repeating yourself. You're not repeating yourself. You say what you mean, you mean what you say, and be done with it. A lot of dudes need to adapt to this mindset. And if you adapt to that mindset and you start getting comfortable with that, you will start to understand your full power as a man. You're not out here begging and pleading and chasing. No, I said what I said. The ball is in that person's court now. Turn your back, walk away. It's the truth. It has to be this way. But see, within here, when you get used to that, it boosts that masculinity. See, on this road, it's going to be a little bit lonely, you know, a lot of people aren't going to like that. But the people who do like that respect you. See, somebody doesn't have to like you to respect you. Let's get that all the way, like, completely clear here, okay? Nobody has to like you. They can still respect you. I don't get why everybody wants to be liked so bad. I'd rather be respected than liked and loved. All right? And that comes from people knowing that you're not a game. You're not to be played with. You take yourself seriously, so when you open up your mouth to even exchange words with somebody, it's something serious. All right, so I'm going to pause the live. I'm going to answer some questions, and then we'll get back to the list. Dark leaves, nobody cares. Free, I get stares and also compliments from women I meet, but when I start regular conversations, they just see me as a friend. After a while, they see I'm focused on me and it's an instant attraction. Okay, so good job. I'm confused. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh, 
A great man named Lou? I don't know. Let them be them then. I said what I said. If people want to be like that, that's on them. I don't, I don't care. Nelson, facts, learn the hard way. Pookie and Ray Ray messing with the stream. I swear, I'm going to get them Pookie and Ray Rays. JoJo said, sup, Justin. I just want to ask your opinion on feeling like you need someone for support and feeling lonely. All right, bro. I'm going to be all the way honest with you. Cut it out. Cut it out, bro. Like, what do you... What do you mean? Didn't you just hear me when I said nobody's coming to save you? You can do that. You can do that, bro. But you're going to see what you get from it. Why would somebody need to feel like they need someone? Feeling lonely, that's what happens when you're a real motherfucker. There's going to be times when you're lonely. Not everybody's going to want to be around you like that. And here's the thing, too, as a young man, right, going through some shit, you're not going to have all the friends that you would think that you're going to have. OK, it's like a period in your life. But when you're taking things seriously in your life, you can't have all these friends. You're going to have to feel that sadness, bro. You're going to be lonely. But here's the beautiful part about it. You get to know yourself more intimately. You get to know yourself better. What you like what you don't like, what you will put up with, what you won't put up with. So there's no feeling alone and feeling sad, bro. You really have to open up your mind. Feeling lonely? What is feeling lonely when you're your own best friend? You're going to feel lonely, but what do I always tell you guys? Use these emotions to fuel you. Use these emotions to fuel you. Tough times don't last. Tough people do, bro. And, I, and it, it sounds like a cliche, but I'm living proof. I'm living proof, bro. I'm, I'm living proof, bro. So don't ever think, yo, don't let this loneliness take you under. Bro, nobody cares about your struggles, bro. I'm going to keep it all the way a thousand. Nobody cares about your struggles, bro. So it's either you're going to let this sink you. Or you're going to use it, let it drive you, and you're going to stay afloat. That's the way this goes, bro. Damn, bro, is blessing us with back-to-back -back lives. Yeah, I had to do it for the family. SSJ, how do I get through quitting weed? I want to stop so bad, but the brain, fog's, the brain fog makes me make socializing hell. Listen, listen, listen. If you want to do something, you do it. This is why I have to speak loud, clear, and concise at you. A man does not allow vices to control him. It's weed. It's not even crack. It's not heroin. It's not fentanyl. So you mean you can't stop smoking weed? Do you stick a needle in your arm? Because without that, you will be sick. You will not be able to function without sticking the needle in your arm. I guarantee you, brother, it's not that serious. So who are you? Go in the mirror, go in the bathroom, wherever you're at, look at yourself in the mirror and say, who are you? Ask yourself that. Because all I'm seeing is a guy who can't stop smoking weed. And to be honest, that's a... That's a very small problem to have, bro. Stop smoking weed. Everybody asks me, how can I stop smoking weed? Anybody quit weed cold turkey? Right here, right here, right here, right here. So I know what I'm telling you is true. Am I special? If you cut me right now, it would bleed just like you. I'm not special. I quit cold turkey right here. Right here, right here. So what's the big deal? Quit smoking the weed, bro. Don't let the weed control you. You smoke weed, that's cool for you, brother. But he's saying he wants to quit smoking weed. But he's letting the weed control him. How do you let something as simple as weed control you? If weed can control you, you know what else can control you? Money can corrupt you. Pussy can control you.
Other weak people can control you. If you can't stop doing that, come on, bro. Come on, bro. It's not the math isn't mathing. Rich said, I need Christ, but no other human beings. That's a fact. A great man named Lou. Thank you for that. Thank you for that super. Jesus coming back. We got to stand on business and stay disciplined. Yes, sir. Your body is goals, brother. What's your weight and how long you've been training? I've been training three years, bro. My weight is 175. Detached from people. Everyone has emotions. Exactly. Nayasha, what's up, what's up? I can't pronounce that name. Asp Dynamite, do you believe in overworking yourself at the gym? Been going in for two hours a day and then use, and then use completing, what? And then use completing that as a, okay, and then use completing that as a reason to not do what I need to do next and have no energy, bro. Seriously, do what you got to do, bro. Do what you got to do. I don't believe in overtraining. Work out every day. I don't believe in any of that. It, it comes down to how bad you want this shit, bro. No. Oh, I overtrained. So now I'm going to leave my dirty clothes in the hamper and like not do them because, you know, I'm tired now. I got dirty dishes in the sink. I know I have to wash them, but I went to the gym for two hours, so I'm not going to wash the dishes now. I got up out of the bed this morning. I know I need to make my bed, but you know, yesterday's workout, whew, bro, my muscles ache, man. There's no way I can make my bed. I mean, what are we talking about? You see how I have to say it like that for you to understand? If you've got shit to do in your life, bro, get it done. Training's not, okay, so then cut back an hour. We're, as men, we're deductive problem solvers, okay? So if that's taking too much out of you, then why don't you cut back an hour from that so you can have everything else aligned perfectly for the day and you can get it done. You won't do that though, because you love training, right? Okay, so what has to happen now? Exactly. Oh, I saw she has kids. Oh my gosh. Lone Wolf said it's easy to stop smoking weed, bro. You're stronger than the weed. Exactly, weed is nothing, man. Tyler Hero, what's good? I remember you from yesterday. Uh, Tyler Hero says, got a coworker I work with, literally side by side, she's way older than me and she gives me the energy that she wants me, but her boyfriend works for the same company, different restaurant, should I approach? Dude, leave it alone. Uh, okay, big brother talk right now, okay? So when you walk out of your house, right? I saw uh, somebody ask this in the live chat yesterday, do a, do a topic on where to meet girls. And I was just like laughing to myself. Okay, so when you walk out of your house, I don't care. You can even make the excuse, there's nothing around me. Okay, so get in your car and drive around. What do you see? You see stores, you see a gym, you see other stores, you see a salon, you see a department store, you see a mall, right? A park, a Dunkin' Donuts, a Starbucks. So why can't you just approach women in the outside world? Damn it, there's even dating apps. And when you have your profile set perfectly, it's, a, it's lit. It's lit. You feel like a kid in a candy store. So why do you want to even approach this chick at your job that already has a boyfriend and her vagina is pre-owned, refurbished, used? Why is it such a big deal that you want to approach her, but you're holding yourself back? Dude, approach the chick. She's not even special like that. Just approach her. But you know she already has a boyfriend. Why even think to put yourself in a situation like this? Just easy access. If it was so easy, you would have went after it. Okay, let me tell this story real quick. So this is when I was working at Applebee's. There was this chick that started there as a server, right? Her boyfriend used to come into the job and then eat with her mom and her pops, right? So they would be all around, right? This is how you know something is easy access. What you're talking about is not easy. You wouldn't ask me, right? So she used to come. Her boyfriend used to pick her up. Sometimes, exactly. So sometimes her boyfriend and the mom, the dad, they used to come and they used to eat together, right? She hooked up with me. She hooked up with Eddie. And she hooked up with some cook in the back. Literally, while we, I had a table. I had tables, bro. I had literally like eight, nine tables. I found a second. I grabbed her. 
Now, if you know Applebee's, you know there's a car side where people come to pick up their orders. There's a door that you can go, you can come from the outside, come inside, or go out from that door. So there's a little hallway in between. I grabbed her hand, pulled her in there, whipped my dick out. She started touching it, we started hooking up. Easy access. And you know how I knew she was easy access? Because of the way she acted with other dudes and everything I heard about her from around the job. That's easy access. Did I have to ask anybody if I should approach or not? When you're at your job, see, most dudes, when they're at their job, they like to shoot their shot at chicks, but they don't even know if anything's clear. This is why you're asking. Has she touched you before? Have you walked in for your shift before and been like, come here, hug her, right? Sniff the neck. Or have you ever caught her off guard and came from behind her and hugged her from the back? And she's like, oh, what's up? And you're just cozy with her. So you already know that you can make things happen with her. None of this is taking place. I already know. None of this is taking place. That's why you're asking. Because if that stuff was taking place, you would have just went in for it. And yes, that girl that I'm telling the story about, her boyfriend was a beta male. I need you dudes to understand. You want to approach these chicks at work, but they're not making it extremely clear that they want you. You're just going off of, oh, she looked at me. <laughs> she smiled at me. I mean... But what the hell is that? I mean, when you're at work, women look around at everybody, bro. So you're not special. Women have to be coming forward at you or you have to put a bid in or shoot your shot in a way that makes it clear that you are sexually attracted to this girl. Here's another story at Applebee's just to give you guys a gist. You know how I'm always saying I was very good at this. Okay, this chick was a lesbian, the bartender at Applebee's, right? So one night she was getting off of her shift. She walked out and she sat in her car, right? I had a couple tables in my section. I looked out. I saw her leaving. We flirt all the time. This chick comes over to me, hugs on me. We flirt all the time, right? So I go out to her car. I get into the passenger. While I have tables right now eating food, I have tickets to go in the kitchen and get the food for. I go in the car in the passenger, and I start playing with her shit over the pants, and then we start hooking up. She pushes me like, you're going to get in trouble. I'm like, man, I don't care about that shit. We keep hooking up. And then I'm like, all right, all right, I got to go. Boom, I go back to work. You see how stuff like that works? We made it abundantly, like, abundantly clear that we find each other sexually attractive. I make the move, she reciprocates the energy. That's how this goes. There's no, she looked at me, she smiled at me, she touched me like this. There, I, like, I don't understand this stuff. Now, that's two stories at the same job, and I got stories for days, bro. Nelson Jafet Rodriguez, anybody can quit weed, cold turkey. Facts. I smoke hella weed, but my shit is together. That's good for you, brother. Not everybody uh, has that going on. It's weed, it's not crack, facts. Tyler Hero, here we go again. All right, so we're gonna, I hope everybody who wants to approach at their job is listening loud and clear. She has kids, so she's pretty much keeping him around for financial help. Here's another thing, why the hell do you care about all that, bro? Why do you care about all of that? You don't, you want to fuck. You want to hook up. So why are you listening to her? Why are you listening to her blab about all of this goofy shit? Why? Let me guess. You want to get to know her, right? You want to get to know her. No, I know you. You want to get to know her. She's been together for two years now. I feel like it's a risk, but low-key feel like she wants me, but I don't know. Like, yo, do you understand? This is how women talk when they're unsure about a guy's intentions or like when they really like a guy. See, in the modern day timing, Men, this video topic is perfect. The rules that men need to abide by and follow in life. Men have become the modern day woman. Men have become the modern day woman, but turn around and complain about modern women. I don't know, man. I kind of feel like, you know, I don't even ugh, like, oh, uh, like, bro, what the fuck are we talking about? This is a chick that already popped out kids, bro. That's got some beta male over there. Pretty much got other dudes too on her ass. The least you could do is just be straightforward and direct and act like she's not better than you, bro. She's not better than you. Just go for it. 
This is exactly what I mean when I say women are not special. She's not special enough for you to be in this live chat explaining her life story. Who gives a damn about her and her kids? Go after what you want and get this shit or leave it alone. Socrates Felix says, I have a bunch of frat kids taking my pictures because I had one conversation with one popular sorority girl who is now apparently obsessed with me and I'm just focusing on myself. They hate me. All right. She might be playing games. Well, Tyler, there's only one way to find out. Okay, brother? There's only one way to find out. So go find it out and then keep us updated. How do you push to the next level of weight? Been stuck. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I remember when I plateaued. It's called the plateau. So I remember when I got down to the leanest that I could get to, I was about, I went from like 246 to about 166.4. And I remember I got stuck right there. And I got, and I was so frustrated, okay? This is where fasting kicked in. You're not gonna lose any muscle. Don't believe in that goofiness. You have to fast. It comes down to how bad do you really want it, bro? You're gonna have to go the whole day and you know go on water fast two three days and you'll be okay but that's how you're gonna get over that plateau i'm telling you and i i kept getting stuck like what am i doing wrong i'm eating less calories you know i'm still doing everything right why am i not losing any more weight go on a water fast and then watch what happens you know like the last ab on the bottom that's when i plateaued and i was like i want to be more defined right there i did a water fast for a couple days did about 20 minutes extra abs every day, bruh, went down. I, I went from one, 166.8, I, I got all the way down to 163, 163 point something, or 164. I needed that little bit and everything was just shredded at the bottom. Had the veins, you know the veins that come up from your abs on the last one? Bro, all you have to do is push the limits. It's not that serious. You have to really think outside of the box. Hundred and one people in here, seventy-eight likes. Can we get the likes up, please, people? Because I'm about to get back into the list. We are answering dating and relationship questions. We are answering those. Likes up, likes up, likes up. Likes up, likes up, likes up. What's good, bro? Brandon Lamar, glad to see you back, brother. Likes up, likes up. Ice to nice. I got you. Hold on. Number four on this list. Invest in yourself. At the same time, save your money. We're going to talk minimalist talk right now, okay? These are the rules that every man must follow in life. Until you become rich, until you make it, right? Until you become wealthy. And then you want to take off and you want to spend your money and buy fast cars. Cool. But as of right now, you need to invest in yourself. I don't think enough men invest in themselves. You'll do other goofy stuff. Like we got somebody in the chat. How do I quit smoking weed? But won't stop smoking weed. Not knowing that that's the biggest investment that he can make right now is stop smoking weed. You see what I mean? It's like the oxymoron. All right. So if you stop smoking weed. You would have more money to invest in yourself and you would actually feel better. And when you look good, you feel good. And when you feel good, everything around you just becomes clear. When you stop smoking weed, you're going to be clear minded. You're not going to be controlled by the weed. So you're investing in yourself. Think outside of the box now. How is that investing in myself? That's not doing anything. 
Yes, it is. You're giving yourself more time to be productive through the day. You don't move like a snail. You don't have the munchies. You save money by not spending it on weed. I don't care if it's $20, $25. I don't care. I don't care if you're copying an eighth. I don't care if it's a, a vape pen for 40 bucks. I don't care what it is, bro. This is what I mean by investing yourself. See, a lot of dudes have dope ideas in their head. There's a lot of people that are actually geniuses that don't think that way. Like they don't think that about themselves. Could have the, the most brilliant idea in their head. Put it down on paper, make something out of it, and then sell this shit. But a lot of dudes don't give themselves enough credit because they're afraid to invest in themselves. You want to play the stock market, you want to play crypto, you want to do all these other things, but you're afraid of the losses that will come before you even lose. But a part of playing is you have to know that you might lose. Enough, like if enough dudes knew that by investing in yourself, you make it back, bro. You make it back. But here's the thing about being a man, right? When you make a decision, whether good or bad, either way it goes, the fact that you made that decision and you stood on that shit. That's what's most important. You made the decision because you wanted to make the decision, bro. Investing in yourself is the right decision. I don't even see how dudes couldn't. I don't even. Uh, hold on. I don't see how dudes don't understand how investing yourself is the way to go, bro. You bet on yourself every time. Don't bet on somebody else. Bet on yourself. Because, see, here's the thing, too. When you bet on yourself, there's a burden of performance. Most dudes can't live up to that. That's why dudes don't want to invest in themselves. But, see, when you invest in yourself, you put weight on your shoulders. You have no choice but to make it or you're going to miss out. But that's why a lot of dudes are afraid to bet on themselves and invest in themselves. Eating healthy, that's investing in yourself. Dressing better, that's investing in yourself. Doing smart things with your money, that's literally investing in yourself. Okay, now let's move on to the saving part. Why do dudes live above their means? Trying to impress some girl, trying to go out, order a table, trying to go out, get some bottles, trying to go out, get some pills, drive around with their friends, pick up girls. But then in the morning, you know, they look in their pockets and they're like, wait a minute. God damn, last night was just full of booze and bad decisions. Yeah, but are you rich, though? See, here's my problem, too. A lot of dudes are always worried about the wrong stuff. Everybody's worried about how can I get this girl to like me? How can I um, improve this? How can I do this? But really at the beginning of it, bro, do you have any savings? Do you have anything to show for your life? If you lost your job, could you pay rent for six months, seven months while you're looking for a new job? No. Confidence is something cultivated. Yeah, I definitely agree with that comment. I'm going to get to that. But listen, not a lot of people understand that living like a minimalist, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, white shirt, blue jeans, white shoes. I match. It fits. Little $10, $20 membership to a gym. Cool. You don't have to have these flossy chains. You don't have to do these things to impress other people because, hey, if you go that route, you're going to be looking at your bank account, your savings account. You're going to be looking in your pockets and there's going to be nothing but lint in your pockets. Invest in yourself at the same time. Stack your paper. Stop worrying about what everybody else on the outside is doing and stack your paper. Reap the benefits on the back end of your life. Delayed gratification, not instant gratification. If I gave a bunch of people, let's say I was a millionaire and I gave a, a couple of people a million dollars, I'm telling you, it would be gone within a month or two. They wouldn't know what to do with it because they're not used to saving the money. Living like a minimalist is boring. That's not exciting. Well, what are you in this life for? You're in this life to be a thrill junkie. You're in this life to be, oh, I want to be, uh, I want to show all of the time. That's what it's about. Dudes need to follow this rule. Stop worrying about girls. Uh, oh, I want to bring her here. I want to show off for this person. I want to be here with these people. Who cares? If your pockets are hurting, that's not a good look. So remember that. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself at the same time. Stack the paper, bro.
and stay focused on that. Everybody asks me, okay, so how do you live? Okay, I'll be transparent here. So basically what I do is when I divide my money, I make sure my rent is paid, I make sure my refrigerator's full, I make sure I have money for my laundry, I make sure that everything that I need the upkeep on, it, stay, it stays like that, then anything else besides that, I put away. Put a couple of dollars in my pocket, I put everything away. Now remember the live, the women that you deal with should be helping you save money, not waste it. I told you, when my main chick comes over here every Friday, bro, between seeing her and all these groceries and shit, I never have to pay for groceries now. See what I'm saying? Bought me a pair of Vans the other day. See what I'm saying? Got me the Brita, got me the air fryer, got me all this shit. You see what I'm saying? I don't give a damn about how pretty the chick is and all of this other goofy shit. What can she do for you? Because I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission. I'm not trying to raise some chick's interest. See, that's the whole, that, that plays into the whole, well, if he don't do this, sis, then you should blah, blah, blah. He got to take me here and there and blah. What? No, 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 no. If you're not going to come in here and add to what I got going on, I don't want to deal with you. Because I'm on my shit right now. I'm stacking this bread. Investing in myself. Don't got no time to invest in a chick. See, I saw that in the live chat the other day. Oh, would you get into a long-term relationship? Why? You know how much responsibility comes with that? See, most of you dudes don't understand. Most of you dudes don't understand that with a long-term relationship, that comes with the security, provision, and providing. Bro, I don't got no time for that right now. Only me. Only me. I only see my vision, my purpose, my agenda. And that's stacking the bread up, getting the chicken bag up. I'm not worried about all of that stuff. Oh, babe, remember, it's our anniversary. So where are we going? Uh, nowhere. What you want to go to the drive-thru? What, what you want to do? Because I'm not doing nothing. I'm on a mission. I'm on a mission, bro. Everybody wants to be out buying new clothes, new shoes, and all that shit. Listen, bro, I'm trying to get the bag up. When it comes time to enjoy something, yeah, you know, go out, buy yourself something nice. But until then, save the bag, bro. And see, here's the thing. When you got all of these vices, when you drink, when you smoke, when you do all of this shit, you messing up the bag. Because when you drink and you smoke and you do drugs and all this goofy shit, it puts you in a situation where you're like, you're feeling all good and shit. And you're like, yeah, let's go here. Let's spend some bread. For what? Because you're feeling yourself now? Because you needed a substance to make you feel better about yourself. So now you can take the bread that you should be saving and spending it. So you're feeling better about yourself only to wake up and feel like shit. Does that make sense? Hold on. You know, like, I don't know if I'm talking a little bit too fast, but I'll slow down if you need to listen. So, you know, that doesn't make any sense. Save the bread. Oh, the next one is fire. Yeah, it actually does. It makes you want to spend money. You see, a lot of people don't talk about this stuff. It's all this YOLO, you only live once. Bro, I don't care about none of that stuff. Okay, so you only live once, right? So how many people are going to write out a will? How many people have a will? So if you were gone tomorrow, who's going to get all your shit? Most of you don't have nothing to give anyway. Let that sink in. Nobody's really on a mission like that. But everybody claims they're on their purpose like that. Get the fuck out of here. I'm not coming at you guys. I'm not coming at my boys in the chat. I'm just saying, like, people in general. Everybody's like, I'm on my purpose. Man, get the hell out of here with that. If you see... K-Seri says, if you see a lot of women at your job, use it as practice for talking to women. Don't be trying to smash every single girl you talk to. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, just talk to women, bro. It's so simple. Just talk to women. Treat them like they're regular. Treat them like they're normal. They're not special. But within there, when you're talking to them, you just get used to them to the point where you know when a chick is feeling you, you know when she's just talking to you to make conversation. SSJ Lama says, I don't know how you get stories like this. Growing up, I didn't get looks until I started getting ripped and even women didn't make it obvious. What do you mean? Like the stories I told before? But see, even here, you're not understanding. You're confusing attention for actually getting down to business. And those two stories that I told you, I'm getting down to business with the chicks. You know, you're stuck on, I got chicks that'll look at me. 
but what happens after they look at you, bro? And even then, women don't make it obvious. Yeah, because see, here's the thing with you guys in these choosing signals. A woman is going to see there's different levels to choosing signals, right? OK, so remember when I said, do you make interactions where you come from behind the girl and you hug her and you're like, yo, what's up? And she goes, hey, and then y'all just there like she's cool. Y'all start talking and shit. You're already feeling on her. Right. So then the next day you'll come into work or wherever you're at. You'll see her staring at you, like looking at you, smiling or whatever. You got a choosing signal, but that you've already done something. You've already acted on it. See why I say you don't even have to wait for choosing signals now. OK. So a chick could give you a choosing signal where she's looking at you and then comes up to you and she's like, yo, you're sexy as hell. Touches on you, grabs your shirt. Heavy choosing signal, bro. Does it happen all the time? No. Can it happen? Will it happen sometimes? Yes. When chicks, when chicks view you as that dude. Okay. Here's a little soft. It's like you ever have somebody run a credit check on your credit. There's a soft one and then there's a hard one. So usually with the hard credit checks, they'll be running it through different bureaus and shit. And they come back with all this paperwork as opposed to a soft one. They run it one time. It doesn't even affect your credit score. Right? So it's the same thing with a soft choosing signal. A chick looks at you. What the hell does that equate to? A chick waves at you. What the hell does that equate to? You have to go over there and find out more. Find out how interested she is. Because you know women like attention. So women will look at you just so you can look at them back. And then they don't give a damn. They got your attention already. Even dudes do this. Dudes are weird, right? So like somebody could be looking at you. You'll look at them. They'll be standing there. Pause. Just waiting for you to see them. You acknowledge them, then they're good to go. They start walking. Same shit. Same shit. Because they just want you to acknowledge them. Because they look at you like you're this super important person. K. Sari says, if you're waiting on women to be obvious, then it's going to take forever. Exactly. Facts. Straight facts. Jojo said the best women be direct as hell. That's a fact. The kid Varney says, I was in that situation a long time ago. I caught feelings. I was clinging. I was clingy and we argue like we a couple and later we was done with each other. She went right back to her BD. Okay. SSJ Lama, again, honestly, hard to get any experience when they expect you to have it off the bat. Like, I don't know what to do. Bro, go up to women and talk to them. They're not these mythical, mystical creatures. They're not. And if you're ripped like you say you are, here's another thing that dudes miss. I be giving out a lot of game in these lives. Okay, so man and women, right? Man and woman, we're different, right? We got different private parts and stuff like that, right? But when it comes down to it, we're still human beings. So what's the feeling that you get in your gut when you see a pretty ass chick that you wanna go talk to? You get that feeling like, oh shit. Like, damn, bro, she's pretty as hell. Like, I wanna say something, but I don't know, bro. Like, nah, fuck it, I'll see her tomorrow. I'll see her, you know, I'll do it next time I see her, right? You don't think that women get that same feeling when they see a dude who they're attracted to who's ripped up and cut up? So you have to go make the move. Women are never going to come up to you and make the move because they're just as intimidated as you are. Okay? This just lets you know that they're not that special, bro. Go over. Make your way over. Hey, what's up? Like, you're very attractive. You're the most attractive chick I've seen all day and shit. Honestly, I just wanted to come over here and introduce myself. I feel like less of a man if I just let you walk past me. What's your name? My name's Justin. How you doing? And then just start rapping, bro. It's so simple. And if she says, ew, Dusty, get the fuck out of here. Okay, walk away. If she says, oh, no, thank you, walk away. If she says, oh, I have a boyfriend, walk away. And why do guys take, uh, so, uh, take that to heart when a chick says, oh, I have a boyfriend. But if you had a girlfriend and a dude approached her, wouldn't you want her to say that to the dude? So, when, bro, when you get a healthy aspect, see, most dudes can't handle rejection because they have not been in the position to do a lot of rejecting themselves. This phone that I have right now, in this phone, before I switch over to the one I have now, recently, there's, I was just looking the other day, there's a bunch of text messages in this phone and some in this phone of me 
dubbing chicks, never talking to them again, and them quadruple texting. You've got me confused. Are we seeing each other tonight? Like, what's going on? I'm not hearing from you. Bro, I've got paragraphs of chicks going psychotic on me. Because I didn't answer. Because I'm done. Do you understand that? When you're in the position of rejecting chicks or just being done with chicks, you're going to understand that you're not that special, bro. You think you're the only person that she's rejected? No, like chicks in my phone. There's a bunch of them. There's no singular, there's no one chick that I rejected and that was it. A bunch of them get rejected. So the same way you get rejected, another dude gets rejected. Hey, you guys can all form the Avengers and have a, a rejection party. You're not special. Rejection is rejection, it's going to happen. But are, is that gonna stop you from going after what you want? Think about it, bro. You know how many chicks rejected me? Right? You know how many chicks rejected me? You think I'm exempt from rejection? No, I get rejected all the time. It is what it is, bro. You ha And I'm good with chicks. I still get rejected. You have to go shoot your shot, bro, or nothing's gonna get better. Stop making excuses like, oh, well, they think you have experience off the rip. If they think that, that's a good thing. That means that she thinks that you're sexually attractive and attractive like that, that you will have chicks. But by you not doing anything or making any moves, you, you're just acting like a guy who doesn't get chicks, okay? And if you don't get chicks, cool, but that's for you to know, not for her to know. Son of 4 Ellis TV, gang gang. Char, been dealing with this girl in my social circle for a little minute. She does everything I need her to do, but I recently found out that she talks mad shit behind my back. Should I cut it off? What do you mean? Elaborate. What do you mean she talks mad shit behind your back? K Siri, oh, you're answering somebody. My bad, bro. Um, Pedro92 TMT says, I quit. I smoke weed seldomly, not a pothead, but to smoke every day. Come on, man. You are not functional and at your finest. Plus, you get the munchies. No way you are eating healthy when you smoke that much. And that's another key, uh, a big key part of why I stopped smoking. That's exactly why I stopped smoking, because I like to be on a low carb diet. So, when you're smoking, that low-carb diet, your body just, you're not dealing with it, bro. You're like, what? Hell no, I'm not dealing with it. And then you start munching on shit. And cereal is my shit, bro. Cereal is my shit. I remember one time, right? I was on a water fast. So this was way, this was like way before my YouTube channel. So I started smoking. Bro, I ate like eight bowls of Cheerios. I'm on a fast, a water fast the whole day. Eight bowls of Cheerios. How sick is that? Uh, what is this? I think it, Mateus DeMello. I only get attention from girls I don't find attractive. I feel I am not him yet. Shake my head. Here's the thing, too. You dudes with that shit, what does that mean? Does that mean utterly unattractive, fat, sloppy, whales, like stuff like that, like cellulite in the thighs, like she's not pretty at all? Because what I find is most of you dudes just don't want to deal with chicks who are not these chicks that you're probably watching prawn and you know you're seeing them get clapped they're not these instagram models they're not any of this so you don't think that she's attractive bro cut it out cut it out bro cut it out because like i say deal with the women that like you like that that's it like you're gonna under you have to do that to understand a woman that's highly interested now that's why i said i'm not talking about like chicks that look like just who did it and ran, like chicks that are disgusting. No, you don't deal with those chicks. I'm talking about like what a dude would call it, a seven, a six. Bro, you're not trying to marry the chick. If you can put her to work, put her to work. There's nothing wrong with it, bro. But see, you're only gonna think there's something wrong with it if you're worried about how everybody else sees you. But here's the thing, you ain't gonna be out in, in public with this chick. <laughs> She's gonna be working for you. And then you're telling her to get the hell out. So what's the big deal? I'd go as far to say every chick without makeup on her face is a seven. Can never be above an eight. Seven. These baddies and these, these, these chicks who you think are a ten, 
Throw them in the pool and then grab them and bring them out. Throw them in the shower and then see them out the shower. Rip the lashes off, see them without the shit. Okay, ice to nice. Is getting back with an ex down the line possible? And if so, is it healthy in your opinion? Dude, why? There's a why, right? To everything that you have in your head. There, at some point, there, there comes a why. What's the why? Why do you want a chick that you've already experienced before? Why do you want that? Why? Okay, I'll answer that for you. The only reason why you're even asking that question is because you like this chick, bro. You like her. Why is it an ex? See, the thing about an ex is your ex is your ex for a reason. The sooner you accept that, the better off you'll be. Okay, so here's how it goes, right? Since you guys care about the body count and all this stuff, right? So let's say that this chick moved on and she's got like, she's getting smacked with like two hot dogs in her face, right? By like two different dudes, right? You still want her back, right? It doesn't matter, right? Because I didn't move on and it's been years. Who is this? I hope that's the same person. Doesn't even matter if it's the same person. I just want to ask that question. So you got a chick, right, that you used to date and you used to deal with, right? So you're, you're, you're catching feelings like you want her back. You dudes all care about the body count. So let's say she's been taking uh, BBC from two dudes, getting smacked in her face and stuff. You still want her back, right? Still want her back? Answer that. Hello? Answer it. Oh, stage fright. Yeah, ice to nice. Answer that. Why are you not answering what I asked you? I want ice to nice. Answer it. Oh, we got a case of stage fright. Krista Fuzz says support from your boy in Pennsylvania. Brandon Lamar was good. Okay, Pedro92, TMT says, I want to stop drinking. You need to stop drinking. You need to stop drinking, bro. Listen, here's a, here's a tip for you, right? So just drink on a Saturday, and that is all. Work hard throughout the week. You get to your Saturday, have a couple beers, whatever your favorite drink is, and then that's it. You leave it alone. Then the next Saturday, you have your little drink. You leave it alone. You got six whole days and one day to actually earn it. It's kind of like a cheat meal. Think about it like that. I don't know if you're into fitness or not. It's like a cheat meal, okay? You go the whole entire week going hard with your life, going to work, putting on your boots, being a responsible man. Saturday comes around, you kick your feet up. You have a drink. Cool. But to say, I want to stop drinking, that sounds like there's a, it's a problem there. You're drinking a little bit more than, you know, the average person. Because if you're just having a beer, if you're having a beer, get out of here, get out of here. Go to somebody else's live or start a YouTube, get out of here. Because if you're having a beer, there's nothing wrong with that. Now I got your back, Pedro. Like there's nothing wrong with having an occasional drink but all you have to do is control yourself with it. Hold on, guys.
We're going to get GT's loser ass out of here. All right, he's out of here. If most dudes had that Kanye confidence, shit would be a lot different. I guess. Talk, my boy. It's funny. Much mouth. Luxury is for broke people. That's why you see all these rappers flexing chains, cars, clothes. They know which audience to target. Yeah, you, yo, you make a great point right there, too, because these rappers that sign their little advance deal, bro, they have to pay that money back and then pay more money back to the label when they put the money behind the album and all this stuff. But see, for the people that are on the outside looking in, these people are cool. These people are who everybody wants to be like, because what do they have around them? The bottles, the chains, the girls, the fast cars, the rented cars, the all the lifestyle. Okay, but do you notice that a bunch of these dudes are like one hit wonders? A bunch of these dudes, they pop off one year, two year, you never hear about them again. So that's really the person that you want to be. When you see these rappers and stuff, you see a bunch of frauds. Like half of them are frauds, but that's who you want to be like. Now, do you understand why I tell you dudes, unplug, unplug, bro, from the bullshit. Be who you want to be. Puya says, is dating in university class worth the risk of seeing her as an ex for next year, even though she is extremely attractive? Bro, why do you guys care? You guys psych yourself out of the dating game. That's why I made the, the live yesterday why the average dude has a hard time dating like yo bro who gives a shit you don't even care about that you want to smash so just go smash and if you happen to date the chick then you happen to date the chick but you're worrying about bro you have the same complex of like somebody who's like wants to go approach a chick but is immediately thinking of 10 ways how it can go wrong how the fuck bro just go over to her the worst thing she could say is no the worst thing you could do is smash and if she becomes your ex, so what? You got what you wanted. No, but not even... Hold on. I'm giving you too much credit. Is dating in university class worth the risk of seeing her as an ex? Or, so you don't even have any potential leads. You're just asking before you, do the, the, before you do it. Bro, date. Dating is not as serious as you think it is. People are always like, oh, these women are toxic and these women are trash. What? Not to a dude that will... Fuck her and kindly escort her out of his life. There's no problems here, bro. As long as you strap up, you don't get anybody pregnant. What's the problem here? Laser beam was good. Daniel Gutierrez, haven't been on this channel in a minute. Hope you're doing well, Justin. Life's been swell. I'm glad to hear that, brother. Life's been swell on this side, too. Wakanda Luciano, brother Justin, what's happening, brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. What about you, brother? What? Slim TV, for real, not everyone is supposed to like you and not everyone is good for you. People believe that they deserve for every person they encounter to like them. Exactly. That's not how that works, bro. Marveloso, 001. What's good, my boy? I can and I will, says, I'm going bald and I'm only 22, but I'm about to start making 120K. That's what I'm talking about, my boy. Char said, I made something happen with her and she said I'm boring. She can't figure me out. If a woman says you're boring, you're done. There's no amount of talking. There's no amount of showing. There's no amount of proving. There's no amount of any of this goofy stuff that's going to put you in a better light with this chick. Scrap it. Get rid of her. Try again. Use a different strategy. Okay? 
And then hopefully that new strategy gets you more women so you see that it works so you keep that same strategy. But this chick, let it go. Modern Male Insight says, I feel more aggressive after I stop smoking every day. I would recommend quitting if you want to get serious in the gym. That's a fact. Let's get back to this list. Number five, talk less and do more listening. Okay? This is another rule every man must follow in life. See, every dude wants to be a leader off rip. Every dude wants to act like he knows everything off rip. But nobody does enough listening. Just want to talk about a bunch of stuff that you think you know, but you're only thinking. You don't even know anything. So when you close your mouth and you open up your ears, you find out that there's a lot of gems that people are dropping that you weren't listening to before because all you wanted to do is talk and be a know-it-all. But see, that leaves you vulnerable because you're not listening to wise advice. When I started excelling in my life, and I know this is true, I started listening to older gentlemen giving me the game, giving me the wisdom, giving me the knowledge, and I'm not questioning why. I'm just listening. So once I took all that information and applied it to my life, everything started going right. Everything started going right. How does that work like that? You know why? Because I knew where I was inadequate. I knew where I could learn more. And I said, you know what? I'm going to put my ego to the side, shut the hell up, and learn from the OGs. Once I did that, I took the information, put it inside my head, and said, okay, I'm going to use this information now to set new standards, new boundaries, and envision my life how I want it now. Everything started working. But first, I had to put my ego aside, shut my mouth, and listen to good advice. And stop being such a know-it-all. Once I did that and I followed that rule, smooth sailings. Most young dudes, and I know that I have a younger audience, they think they know it all. They think they know better. That's why I could say something, and they would say, well, that'll never work. Well, you're crazy. How do you think that, that, that'll never, why do you think I'm telling this to you? You think I'm just pulling shit out of my, you know, you know, you think I'm just pulling stuff out of my bag and I'm, I'm trying to tell you something or you think I've already experienced it a bunch of times, so many times that it feels like Groundhog's Day. That's why I'm telling you this stuff. See, a lot of dudes would be better off if they just started doing more listening. It's all you got to do. But a part of it is putting your ego to the side and see the ego is actually, it gets in a lot of dudes way because see, here's the thing, even with the rejection thing, even with the taking losses thing, it bruises your ego. It bruises your ego. That's why dudes are afraid of rejection. That's why dudes don't go after what they want. That's why dudes are afraid to say what they want. That's why dudes are afraid to ask for what they want because that little old ego is gonna get bruised. Baby's gonna get put in a corner. But if you put the ego aside in a lot of cases, you understand that you're better off. Why do you think I don't fear rejection? Why do you think I'm like, okay, I understand. Everybody has to get rejected. I'm not special. I'm going to get rejected. Remember, I said it in one of my videos. You're going to go through life bracing yourself for bullshit to already come because you know life can't be perfect. Every step you take in life, everything you do in life, you're not going to get everything first try. You're not. But you have to put that ego aside to understand that. So remember, more listening, less talking. Okay, number six. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. So what that means is if something's not on your timing, if something doesn't want to be a part of what you're offering, this could be women, this could be friends, this could be anything, bro. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. Okay, here's another thing. Somebody's coming forward at you, bringing you 
negative energy. But they're not putting their hands on you. They're kind of just like on some bullshit like, oh, this dude's a loser or whatever, whatever. If I know I'm not a loser, I instantly identify this dude's on. He's trying to ride my coattails. He's not, he's not on my level. That's why he's acting out this way. But that has no effect on me because I know I'm that dude. So it doesn't apply to me. So I'm letting it fly. Okay, let's say you're really good at something. So I'm a content creator. Okay, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber, whatever you want to call it, right? Somebody comes in my live chat or somebody comes to me and says, yo, you suck at YouTube. You're a bum. I'm just like, uh, well, I hate to do this, but the numbers don't say so. So, I mean, like, okay, that's your opinion, but it doesn't apply to me, so I just let it fly. And not that I'm a numbers guy. I'm just saying it's like, it, it's what's, what's true. So, it doesn't even apply to me. So, why would I let it affect me? Let it fly. Okay, let's move it to women. So when a woman doesn't want to be a part of your program, right? A woman's acting hot and cold. She's acting flaky. She doesn't want to be about what you want to be about. Okay, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. Most dudes take it personal. Most dudes are like, yo, I want to get back at this chick. I want her to see me with a better chick. You know, I want to get my money up so I can flex. Then I could be on a gram taking these pictures of, you know, I'm going to be in Tahiti and I'm going to be here and she's going to see and she's going to be jealous. Why? She didn't like you, but you like you. So it doesn't apply. So let it fly. Somebody doesn't want to be cool with you, right? Somebody doesn't want to be friends with you. Okay. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. You can use that for anything in your life. Stay centered, bro. Stay focused. If something's not trying to be what you needed to be in the situation, let it fly. If people are not on your timing, let it fly. It is not that important. You are important. Okay, number seven. Never negotiate attraction. This is another rule every man must follow in life. Never negotiate attraction. Okay, so I told you we we're going to talk about dating and relationships. I don't know what you mean, K Brown. How do I go about the restart? So do not negotiate attraction. See, here's the thing. When you're negotiating attraction, you're already putting yourself at a loss. Okay? And I mean, it even starts when you're a little kid, when you're trying to negotiate for friends and shit. Well, I'm going to do this and I'm going to bring this kid this so he'll be friends with me. The fuck? She just want to be friends with you. We're kicking it. But see, as a little kid, you don't know any better. But see, if you don't grow up in the mind, you bring that, that type of energy to relationships. Well, you know, I'm going to beg, plead, and barter with this chick, you know, so I can negotiate some attraction, which actually makes her lose attraction for you. And a part of being masculine is never negotiating shit. You stand on your square. That's why you have to follow this rule. See, if you're in the business of negotiating attraction, you're going to negotiate respect. See how that works? If you negotiate respect, nine times out of 10, you don't get respect like that. I'm gonna tell you like this, masculine dudes, bro, you get respect off rip just, unless somebody's a pure asshole, you get respect from like 90% of the people you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. Nobody disrespects you. You don't even have to negotiate anything. But if you're a person who doesn't stand on your square, you don't know where you're at with your life and shit, you're always going to be put in these predicaments where you're negotiating respect and you're negotiating attraction. And it cannot be like that. I'm sorry. You know, it just can't. Jen Aru, bro, I'm about to block you. This is goofy ass behavior. Guys, pay attention. Pay attention. I want everything to be a teachable moment. The guy Jan Aru. Look at his question. He's at the bottom of the chat. Look at Jan Aru at the bottom of the chat. You guys think that's masculine? You guys think that's masculine? Jan Aru, get the fuck out of here. The hell is wrong with you, bro? What is wrong with these dudes? Like, 
I'm, t I'm sorry, guys, but you know, I just can't stand when something's not logical. Why would you ask something like that? Yeah, I got to turn the moderators on, man. What do you mean I deleted it quick? You guys should have been able to see it. He asked me a goofy ass question that you, you dudes like to shame women for. Why the hell is you asking a dude that? You want to you want some you, you want to do something like well, I'm not understanding. That was the goofiest shit I've seen all day. That takes the cake. All right, I'm going to answer some questions. I can and I will says, I miss my ex, no lie. You know where she's at, brother. She's with uh, Pookie and Ray Ray right now, so... Shandon says, look at this man, dog. Gave us a four-hour live stream last night and back at it. You in your mode right now, G. We watching the come up. Shout out for all the wisdom and gems. Yeah, I got you, brother. That's what I'm here for. Brandon Lamar says, tuned in. Respect, brother. Rubberman says, respect. Wish you the best. Same. I wish you the best too, brother. These Game Zone says, I'm 28 today. I'm taking my life back as a man. Just stopped smoking weed today. Started a simple workout routine to get my body to my desired look. Appreciate Justin for the content and advice. That's what I'm here for, brother. See, that's growth and elevation. Don't stop, bro. Have a, have a vision in your head of how you want your life. Gabriel RC says, God damn, why we got to have egos? You're for real the big, you're for real your biggest enemy. That's a fact. You got to get out of your own way, bro. A lot of dudes are in their own way. Brandon Lamar says, yes, sir. The OGs, it's a scripture in the book of one Kings named Raho, Raho Bomb. He refused wise counsel from older men. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. K Brown says, question, hey, Justin, I cut off the girls I lost interest in and got rejected by the girls I wanted Start starting the rotation over. Bro, that's how it goes. I don't think a lot of you understand that. This is how it goes, bro. The chicks who you don't want like that are always going to want you like that. The chicks that you want like that are always going to be in the middle or on the fence about things. It's just the way the game goes. It's cool, bro. But see, I will say something here. See, this is what I'm talking about, what you do with these dumbass high standards and stuff. High standards for what? If pussy doesn't have a face, all you're doing is smashing, right? So why would you get rid of every girl on your rotation to start over because I cut off girls I lost interest in? And like, okay, so you lost interest in them. Why? For me, it's hard to lose interest when a chick is doing everything I need her to do. She's buying shit that I'm telling her to get. She's buying shit without me even telling her to get anything. She's doing everything to stay in my presence. Why am I kicking her to the curb like that? Why? No, let her keep working. See, now see, remember in yesterday's live I said, I'm over sex, bro. Sex is cool or whatever, but the best feeling to me is the control. Okay, the control, the influence I have over a chick. That's the best part. So look, now you got no girls and you're starting the rotation over. But for what? Did any one of them disrespect you? 
I can guarantee you these chicks weren't doing things to, you know, earn your presence. More so, you were just giving them access to you. So it got boring. But how can it ever get boring when you view yourself as a brand and a business and you got employees and they come to work every day on time, chipper, ready to do their job and they do it well to the best of their ability? How? How can you lose interest? Stargazer said, yo, Justin, just cop teach Henley level two with your promo code. Thanks for the knowledge of the game. That's what I'm here for, brother. 100K said, never heard another grown man ask that question. That's what I'm saying, bro. That's why I was just like, what are we, what are we talking about here? What are we doing here, bro? That boy brain says, I get really shy. Any advice? Be a man. Stop being a boy. Go talk to the chick and just make things happen. I advise you, don't talk to the chick. Just don't. Because you're just going to like, it's not going to work. What you need to do is hit me up on Instagram, book a one-on-one -on -one call, and we'll go over a bunch of stuff over there. But don't make any sudden moves. Because you'll probably end up like embarrassing yourself or a chick might reject you and it's going to cause you to feel worse about yourself. You need to come up with a strategy to get to how you want and do it effectively. But until you have that, just relax. Hold off on that. Hunter K said facts. Most people would charge for this level of advice. Yeah, man, but that's why I just do these lives. Um, I do the videos because, you no, know, not a lot of people have money for the one-on-one -on -one calling. People need help, you know, but try to help as much as I can. New Garudin says, how do I improve my pull-up reps? Give yourself rest days from pull-ups. It's as simple as that. Give yourself rest days from pull-ups. Gus the artist says, this woman looks at me at work and sometimes smiles at me. How do I go about managers are just staring? Bro, unless this woman came up to you and told you, you are sexy as hell. Or unless you went up to her and you told her, you know, you're sexy. You're sexy as hell. I find you super attractive. What's up? If you're not saying anything to her, don't, it, it don't, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. See, it's on the list. Stop. You guys are always worrying about shit. You always think things and don't know anything. See, everything I say always comes full circle because of the truth. You guys think a lot of things. You guys don't know a lot of things. So when you think a lot of things, you misinterpret things and misconstrue things. But when you know a lot of things, accidents don't happen because you already know and you know what to look forward to. Dating older women versus younger women. Please advise. I'm 42. Brother. Just get women on a roster. Get women on a rotation. Older women are going to be looking for a Captain Save a Chick, right? Younger women are going to be in the prime of their life, living it up, okay? Doesn't matter. You should not be looking for a commitment. Just get girls in a rotation. See which ones are highly interested in you. Keep them on the rotation as you're cycling women in and cycling women out so, or out and in it doesn't matter women are women the only thing i will say is but it's on both sides younger women can try to trap you if you're a dude who has your life together you have everything set up older women gonna try to trap you because you have your life set up they ran out of options like that so be careful always strap up women are women
Puya says, Justin, can you explain dealing with low interest women? You're dealing with women that are going to give you hot and cold energy. You're dealing with women where nothing is for sure. You're dealing with women where you set plans and you already feel in your gut she's going to flake on you. Dealing with low interest women is texting a woman a lot and then her having and, and then her giving you a one word answer. Dealing with low interest women is going for a kiss after the first date and she moves her face. Low interest women are going to be kind of like they don't want to come over to your house. Even though you've been on FaceTime, you've met up already. She's got a feel for you. That's low interest because they, they do go over to dudes houses off the first link after the first date. All that shit. Don't let women lie to you. Dealing with low interest women, it feels like pulling teeth. It feels like, what the hell, man? Why is this chick being so difficult? Dealing with low interest women, you don't get the vibe she likes you. You know the vibe is off, but you're just chasing. Honey K said, high interest. Okay, so Puya, you said only high interest. Yes. Now, high interest. Kisses you after the first date, will even come over to your house off the first link, wants to, uh, wants to bring things to you on the first link. Do we need anything? Okay. She wants to get touchy-feely ASAP. Okay. She's coming forward. She keeps redirecting the conversation, wants to know all this shit about you. And you're like, yo, back up off of me like that. Dealing with a high interest woman and medium or low, it's night and day, bro. Once you experience a high interest woman, you're never going to let a chick run games on you ever again, bro ever again to the point where when a chick even breathes the wrong way she's done she's done and chicks are going to be looking at you like you're weird because you're onto their games already <laughs> lc said come on now pull you <laughs> What do you consider mid? Why does it matter what I consider mid? What do you consider? Now, respect, brother, but Puya, you got to understand this stuff. Stop worrying about what other men think because you're going to be dry. You're not going to be getting wet. You're not going to have access to shit if you're worried about what everybody else thinks, bro. What's mid to you? And what is mid? Okay, so if you have a mid chick that's buying you shit, coming through, cleaning your place, folding your clothes, doing the dishes... Sucking and fucking you on command. What the hell do you care? Because you know what? When you find a chick that look better than her, time for her to go. Or, or if that chick doesn't do a good, as, uh, a good of a job as the mid chick, but she looks better, then what's the one that looks better? What is she worth then? That's not where a woman's value is, bro. Y'all got this messed up. Let me, let me, get, this, let me get this through y'all head. I know a lot of y'all think in this space, women are born with their value. Men have to earn their value. That's only true if you believe a woman's value is in her looks. Your perception is your reality. So if your perception is, you know, a woman, a beautiful woman, that's her value, then that's your reality. But if your perception is whatever this shit can do for me, that's what I'm judging shit off of, then that's your reality. And how do you win? What mentality do you think uh, leaves you in the position to win? And what mindset thinks, what mindset do you think leaves you in the position to lose with women? I'll wait for it. Remember, logical thinking always. So really think about that. So a woman's value is her looks. To who? To who? Let me know, please. This is exactly why you dudes miss it. That's not a woman's value, bro. There's pretty women everywhere. So what's so valuable about it? <laughs> like, let's make sense. Of, uh, let's make sense of this. If pretty women weren't everywhere, and then you'd have to move to a certain state to see pretty women, okay, I could understand. But there's pretty women everywhere. So what's so valuable about it? Because simps make them valuable? Really? Derek Crawley says, I did 15 pull-ups today, tried for 20, but I'll get, I'll get it one day. Hey, don't worry about it, bro. It's only five more. You'll get to it. K 
Kay Brown said, I lost interest because they are annoying seeking a relationship. No, 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 no. Let me stop you right there, Kay Brown. If they knew the deal from the beginning and you told them the role that they need to play, they could never come at you like that. So you're not responsible in any way here. No. My main chick will never come out of her face and ask me for a commitment. She already knows the deal. She already knows the deal. Because I kept it straight up with her from the beginning. A woman is only going to come at, come at you with that bullshit of, well, what are we? I want to be in a relationship and da, da da If you don't address that from the beginning because you're worried about getting boxed. LC said, this guy, K. Brown. <laughs> Yo, that's crazy. I saw that right after I answered that. It's funny to me, bro. Like, you guys think that you're dating effectively, but you're not. Because you're not saying exactly what you want to happen. You're not being clear, concise, and direct with these women. So then when they start feeling the type of way, you're thinking that she's crazy. No, 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 no. You didn't tell her the rundown from the beginning and give her the choice to leave or stay. Brandon B says, should I break no contact with a woman I used to fuck with at my job? She's trying to sniff for clues now. Something I want to spin back and try again. I'm having mixed feelings about it. Bro, do whatever you want, bro. But I'm going to tell you right now, this is a sign of some dude who you're not, you're not, you don't have a rotation. You're not dealing with multiple chicks because if you were, you would be moved on from this chick. You would be moved on. See, should I break no contact? No, no. Some idiot I know just broke no contact. And you know what it did? It souped her head up. It souped her head up. Now, he's not in the position that he was in. She was all, oh, I wonder why he's not hitting me up. Why is he not contacting me? Da, da, da. She was all nervous, panicking, saying, oh, I miss him. And this, that, and third. Now, you know, how she, you know how she's thinking? Oh, well, you know, if he don't come around, it's good because he wasn't the one for me anyway. But he reached out first, so something must have been wrong with him. He must have been catching feelings again. Bro, once you go no contact, leave these chicks alone, bro. Still mad at this fool for doing that shit, for reaching back out to that chick. K. Brown, stop giving advice in the chat, bro. Stop. Cause you could be direct with Brandon B, but you can't be direct with some low, uh, some mid chick in your in your rotation. Stop it. Don't do it at all, Brandon B. Don't listen to him. Don't do it at all. Cause here's what's gonna happen. Unless she's on your program fully, you wouldn't have went no contact in the beginning if she was on your program fully, right? So why give her another chance to not be on your program fully, right? Them apps is trash. No, you don't know how to use them effectively. And I will get to that question. How do y'all do this with this bullshit, bro? Why did I have a ball on it? Why did I feel like one of these, like how y'all say, the baddie? Bro, whenever I jump on Hinge, I feel like a baddie. I get that many matches. Chicks come straight through. I have no problems. Why? If they're trash. Oh, let me guess. You've got muscles, bro. Oh, well, you're you, bro, right? Apps are leftovers. Gus the artist. Bro, every chick that you encounter in your life is somebody's leftovers. Why do you guys like complaining? Gus, the woman that looked at you at work and sometimes smiles at you, you know that chick is somebody's leftovers, right? But you're still concerned about that chick looking at you, right? So why would you try to shame somebody for using a dating app? Does that make sense? Every woman is leftovers, bro. See, this is what I'm talking about. You see, you pedestalize women. You view them as special, but at the same time, you want to talk shit about them. It doesn't make any difference, bro. It, 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 it's, it's insane to me. Women on dating apps are trash. Yeah, I know, Gus. True, true. Let me, all right, Gus, you don't know what the hell you're talking about, okay? See, if you dealt with a lot of chicks, you would deal with chicks that haven't been dating for a while. Maybe they've gotten fucked a few times, but they haven't been 
dating like that or it's been months between them getting fucked. Their girls are all in relationships. Their girls tell them, you need to jump on Hinge. I met my boyfriend on Hinge. Me and my boyfriend have been together for six to eight months. You should make a profile. The girl says, no, I'm good being alone. No, 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 just give me your phone. The chick, her friend, makes the fucking profile for her. She jumps on. She doesn't really get any matches. Let me let you in on a tip. When a woman doesn't pay for the app, it's the same as a dude who don't pay for it. All she's getting is landmines. All she's getting is landmines. She's getting dudes like Gus. She's getting dudes like, you know, dudes that don't know what to say. Their profile makes them look gross, creepy, and disgusting. That's all she's getting flooding throughout her shit. Maybe every once in a while she'll get an attractive dude. So I'm the attractive dude. I like her profile. And she goes, holy shit, we got a winner here. Let me see what this is about. We go back and forth. We meet up. We fuck. You don't think that that happens on dating apps? No, that doesn't happen. I guarantee you, you wouldn't know anything about that because like you said, they're trash. So you're the average guy who doesn't get a lot of matches. You're the average guy who matches with a chick and you're asking her what the hell she does for a living and what's her favorite color. Dating app or cold approach, it doesn't fucking matter, bro. Doesn't matter. Do both. Yo, you guys got to stop with this victim mentality, bro. Dating apps, see, like I said in the other live stream, say, in my experience, dating apps are trash. In my, in my experience, I don't get a lot of luck. I don't have a lot of luck on the dating apps. That's all you have to say. Don't say dating apps are trash. Because didn't the uh, statistics say that women go after the top 20% of dudes on dating apps? So somebody's having success with the dating apps. No. Does that make any, does that make logical sense? Hmm? So where are you? Whenever you were on it, whenever you experienced it, are you the 20% or are you the 80%? You sound like you're the Carlos, A, hey, that's my mindset. Looks are okay, but what else does she have to offer? I'm not going to be completely sold on a woman's beauty. Exactly. Because women look good, but that doesn't mean, okay, so you get a car, right? You don't test drive. <laughs> it looks good, but the inside could be messed up. But you don't know that because you're going off of what looks good. That doesn't make any sense, does it? LC, don't even give Brandon that advice. Brandon, leave the chick alone, bro. It's really that hard for you to leave a chick alone? Really? You don't have other girls? You don't have other girls? Just leave it alone. Gabriel Lessage, do you think dating apps are good? Only if you know how to use them. If you don't know how to use them, it's not gonna, you, don't even get on it, bro. Don't even get on it. If you need help setting up your profile, I've got 35 dating app openers and, you know, conversation starters and things to keep the redirecting the conversation. If you need help making the profile and if you need help opening up conversations, I got it covered. But, bro, if you do not, yo, this is a PSA for everybody. If you do not know how to use dating apps, stay the hell off of them. Stay off of them. You're going to end up like Gus talking all this bullshit. Tweet like Mike says, 27 years old, just recently quit drinking, clubbing, used to be around a lot of girls all the time. Now, not so much besides dating apps. Where do you meet new ones? Bro, why do you guys keep saying this shit, bro? Go outside. Go outside. Starbucks, Lowe's, Dunkin' Donuts, Home Depot, Target, Best Buy, Walmart, Home Goods, um, Home Goods. What's the other one? TJ Maxx. 
Marshals. Just go ahead. Go outside. Talk to women. You know what I mean? When I say women are not special, you guys miss it. It goes over your head. So women are so special to you, you think there's a special place to go and meet them. Like they're an endangered species. Fuck. Gus, I don't know, bro. Like, I th you're looking for something. You're looking for uh, 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 a YouTube dude that I'm not. I'm not, bro. Like, I don't, like, when we date these women or take them serious, how many kids should we limit? Like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Do whatever it is that you want to do. LC said, how many kids, bro, leave the live stream at this point? You watching too many dating gurus. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, it's not this complicated, bro. <laughs> it's not this complicated. And you know what? Never mind. We ain't even going to get on Gus, man. Just let it go. Honey K. Just set up a one-on-one -on -one call. It's better that way. I could run you through the whole, you know, how to set up your profile, how to do the prompts, things to say to open up, stuff like that. Not giving that away on here for free. Not giving that away on here for free. Blue Steel 920, she'll trap you with the kids and then divorce you to cash in on the monthly check. Bro, where, what is wrong with you dudes? You dudes don't have any control over your life. So, okay, let's talk about it. So, a chick traps you with a kid, divorces you, takes your monthly check. Okay, you still made the decision to get with her in the beginning, so why is you complaining? Why is you crying? Why is you crying? Hey, Blue Steel 92, Blue Steel 920. You've been, you've been trapped with a, a baby by a chick, right? You've been divorced. You've been through all of this, right? Not statistically speaking, you've experienced this, right? Because I didn't see in my experience, she'll trap you with the kids and then divorce you and cash in on the monthly check. Let's see it, Blue Still. You've been in that situation, right? That's your story, right? Or are you speaking on somebody else's story? So you're letting other people speak for you, like speak through you, right? Because this sounds like the modern day... uh. Do like whatever. What do you call it? This sounds like some dude that this is already said by somebody else. This doesn't sound like something that's you authentically. First date advice, food, drinks, price range, bro. There ain't no first date. We're going for drinks. One, two drink minimum. We're going for ice cream. We're going for coffee. That's it. But all you got to do, bro, is get it. I'm not even giving that game away. Book a one-on-one -on -one call, bro. You guys don't even believe that chicks will come straight to your house. You don't have to do all this extra shit. But I'm not. I'm not giving that away for free. I do enough service to. Uh, I give. Uh, bro, I give you guys so much game between the videos and these free lives. Can't do it, bro. Can't do it. Can't do it. You dudes got to understand. The reason why I'm teaching you this stuff is because I'm, bro. I'm Ray Charles to the bullshit. Women can tell y'all whatever they want, but dude, this whole first date thing, you don't even have to do that shit. Exactly, Miguel A. They are everywhere. Why are these guys so afraid to talk to women? Bro, just start. All right, start here. For everybody who has approach anxiety, for everybody who's afraid of women, when you're out and about and you see a woman... Just do this and you can still get rejected, but it'll sting less because you didn't open your mouth like you didn't say too much. You see a woman, you make eye contact. Hey, hello. What's up? That's it. You see how simple that is? You don't have to go up and tell her you think she's sexy. You think she's very attractive. Just try this. Hey, hello. What's up? Chick's going to be like, hey, how's it going? And you're going to walk past. Get used to doing that. 
Just get used to doing that first. So then you can take a breath and understand that these people are not here to hurt you. Women are not the predator, okay? They're not like, like Jason Voorhees or like Michael Myers. They're not out of a horror movie trying to run you down and like, you know, kill you and stuff like that. No, no, no. They're just people. J A said J double A says salute brother. Are you getting tomorrow also one-on-ones? Yes, I'm taking one-on-ones. Guys, if you need a one-on-one -on -one consultation call, book them. Go to my Instagram, Justin J underscore. DM me. I'll send you the flyer. We can get on a one-on-one -on -one call. I have lists, I have an itinerary, I have all sorts of things to guide you in the right direction to rebuild your strategy into a stronger strategy to get what you want. I post results on my story. Just posted them the other day, okay? I love getting DMs from God and comments from dudes saying, I took your advice and now my dating life is better. It's all going in my favor and all I had to do was listen and apply the steps. Remember on the list, Clo close your mouth, open up your ears. It does wonders. Tweet like Mike. Love the channel, Jay. Keep it up, man. I got you, brother. Gifted one says, only catch and release women from bars and clubs. You know the reason they're there. Okay, this is another thing. Yeah, women are special to you, bro. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares where you meet the woman, bro? This, 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 see, this is like, oh, just catch and release. You got to catch and release every woman. All right? Catch and release every woman. Why are you breaking them down into categories and, you know, this is a good girl and this isn't. And this, like, bro, women are women. Grayson Mitchell, where can we set that up? My Instagram is Justin J underscore. Head over there right now. Send me a DM saying I want to book a one-on-one -on -one consultation call. And we will make that happen. J double A and the same prices. Yes, yes, don't worry about it. Just DM me. We'll figure out the rest. Just go ahead. Stop asking all these questions. If you want the one-on-one, -on -one, you're going to follow my instructions. Go over there and DM me right now. All right, let's get back to the list. Number eight, never chase women, chase the money. A lot of dudes don't understand that. When you chase a woman, all you do is repel her. That's all you do. But when you chase money, it never runs from you. We're gonna ignore that. So, hold on. Let me say something. New Garodin, why are you in the chat trying to show off for dudes, bro? Let's call this shit out, bro. We're gonna call everybody out. I'm real, bro. I'm just direct with my shit. You're in a chat full of strangers. I never asked out a woman in my life. They always came up to me first, I swear. Do you want a biscuit, brother? A cookie? A brownie? An edible? Your uh, what do you want? A uh, uh, lollipop? What do you want, bro? What do you want? What do you want? Okay, because you got the floor right now. You want attention, so we're giving you attention.
Why is it that when I ask a question, nobody answers the shit? Like you wanted all this attention, you have the floor, and now it's like nothing. I don't get it. Let me get back to the list. Never chase women, chase the money. See, when you chase women, all you're going to do is lose money. There's no gain there. A lot of dudes lose who they are. They lose sleep. They lose time. They lose energy. But when you chase the money, what happens? What happens? You stack the money. It puts you in a better position. You can invest the money. You can flip the money. Right? The money doesn't run away from you. When you're working hard to chase the money, get the money. It doesn't repel from you. But when you chase a woman and try to work hard and do all of this stuff for a woman, doesn't she run from you? Always. Guaranteed. Always. It's guaranteed when you chase a woman, she repels from you. That's a very important rule that every man must follow in life. Don't chase the women. Chase the money. Okay? Because with the money, you will always get women. Okay? But when you don't got no money and you're chasing after women, you ain't getting no women. And it's not even about the woman. It's about you. So what's in your best interest? To chase the money. I hope that makes sense for a lot of dudes. See, money isn't the end-all be-all, but unfortunately, we need money. We need money to purchase a nice home. We need money to live a, a good life. We need money to have stability. We need it. But do we really need women like that? I mean, you know, catch and release. You know, you do your thing with a chick, but then you get her up out of there. Do you really need her for anything? What can a woman do for a man that he cannot do for himself? And you could uh, adopt a kid. You can adopt a kid. You could uh, pay to play. So what can a woman do that a man can't do for himself? So you're better off chasing the money. Okay. Number 10. Don't stress. Oh, number nine. Never idolize someone else. I'm keen on this. See what I'm telling you, dudes? When, when somebody says something like, oh, but you're, you're this guy. No, what's the difference between me and you? I cut, I cut right here, I'm going to start bleeding red. If you cut right there, you're going to start bleeding red. So why do people idolize people? Yeah, you can have people that you look up to. Yeah, you can have people that you take advice from. Yeah, you can see a dude and say, yo, this dude's masculine as fuck. Like, this dude is somebody who I would love to take advice from. Cool. But to idolize somebody, bro? Like you're hanging up posters on your wall of this person? Like they're your new god? What the hell is that? What is that? To be a fanboy of somebody else? Really? You never do that. You never do that. A part of being a man is you see yourself as that dude. You can take advice from other people, but you don't idolize somebody else. Because you know what that means? You don't see yourself as that dude. You don't see yourself as that dope dude. This is exactly why we have a lot of men running around talking and having viewpoints from somebody else. You're not even thinking what you want to think. Your thoughts are somebody else's thoughts. You haven't even went out into life and got your own experiences, yet you're listening to somebody else, adopting their mindset, and you don't even know if that's really their mindset. See, a lot of people, see, this is why I tell the truth. This is why I just tell the truth. So you guys, I get these comments all the time, bro, I feel like you're right next to me talking to me when I watch your videos. I'm like, yeah, that's because I'm telling the truth. You ever wonder how, you ever wonder why I, I keep doing this? Everything comes full circle when you tell the truth. You ever hear me keep saying that? I'll be talking about one thing, start talking about another thing. Somehow I'm still talking about the same thing because when you tell the truth, everything becomes clear. Everything is full circle. That's why I tell the truth. But see, most dudes watch the content creator or watch the dude on the screen. They don't even know if that's his mindset. He could just be pushing this shit so you can believe what he wants you to believe. I'm adding moderators the, la the, the, next, the next live. I'm, I'm adding moderators. Anybody that comes in here with some weak shit, get them out of here. 
So never idolize others, brother. My brothers out there, never idolize somebody else. Because that is going to leave you exposed to not think how you want to think. To not say what you want to say. To not have viewpoints that you want to have. You're going to be easily influenced. You got to look at yourself like you're that dude. If you look up to somebody, you say this person's a good role model and stuff like that, cool. But to idolize somebody, do everything, try to talk like them, try to walk like them, try to move like them, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I truly believe that that's one of the rules that every man must follow, bro. Be your own hero. Be the man that you always needed. Because like I say, you know, dudes think, yo, yeah, I had a father. Okay, if he wasn't a masculine presence in your life, that's equivalent to having no father anyway. Okay, so remember that. Be the man that you always needed. Shout out to Wes Watson. I think Wes Watson said that. That's why I heard that. Be the man that you always needed, bro. Understand. Turn yourself into that guy. Don't idolize somebody else. What if somebody wanted to be like Justin J? No. You would want you want to take advice from Justin J. You think Justin J has a dope mindset? I think similar. But to idolize Justin J? No. I'm even telling you, don't idolize me, bro. Listen to what I'm saying, apply the knowledge to your life and do better, bro. But don't put me up on a pedestal. You can think you can be appreciative and be like a fan of my work. Cool. But you don't idolize somebody. You don't do that. You put yourself up there. You view yourself as that dude. And you have role models. And you have people that you take advice from. But you don't idolize people. There's a whole different thing. Idolizing is like wearing somebody, wearing somebody, getting somebody's face tattooed on you. You know, there's people who do that, right? Who get like rappers and people tatted on them. I'm like, why the hell would you do that? Because they idolize that person. You ever see when a chick like sees a Justin Bieber or a celebrity, you ever seen a video of a chick like, oh, and she's crying and she faints on the floor because she idolizes him. Imagine acting that way if you saw whoever's your favorite uh, musician or something. Imagine you cried and fell out on the floor. You know you look like a punk, right? But that only happens because people idolize these people. But for what? They're the same as you. Exactly. That's even biblical. I didn't even want to take it there because, you know, I, don't, I didn't want to take it there. But you see, that, like, bro, it's not a good look. You're not supposed to do it. And honestly, it's not good for your it's not good for your mentality because you see other people as more important than you. You see people as above you. Nah, bro, that whole uh, getting other dudes tatted on you, it's, it's completely, it's hilarious. It doesn't make any sense. But that's because they idolize people and they think that that behavior is normal. And it's absolutely not normal. Okay, number 10. Don't stress over things you can't change. Don't stress over things that you can't change. This is a common problem that men are going to bump into. When you can't change something, you have to accept it. It's just the way it's going to be. It's not going to change. Okay? But that doesn't mean that you have to jump out of the window, start getting upset, you know, asking yourself, well, why isn't this happening the way I want it to happen? This is what happens with a lot of dudes. This could be a female. This could be an opportunity, anything. When something doesn't go your way, you're like, God damn it. If only I did this. It would go like this. If only I do this now, I can fix this. You know, I don't want it to go away. How can I, how can I get it back, right? Remember, this could be anything. Female, opportunity, whatever. How can I get it back? Damn, like I'm going crazy. Staying up late at night, like damn, I just, I just know if I would have done this one step different that I would have had a different outcome. It's not true, bro. You don't know. You don't know that. And you don't have a time machine to jump into and rewind and go back in time. So if you can't control, right? or you can't change a situation, let it go. 
It's going to save you time. It's going to save you energy. And it's going to leave more space in your head to develop positivity, positive thoughts, positive self-talk. You're going to be on to the next. You're going to be doing new things, thinking of new ideas. How to push yourself forward in life. Do something else that you want to do. Go after something. Do not waste time stressing over situations that you cannot change. And here's another thing. If you've been through some traumatic stuff, right? Or if you've been in some sort of trouble before and now it's past you, let it go. You let that shit go, bro. Do not let that stuff weigh you down. That's another one. That's number 10. It's the last one. But I think this is the most important part because men's mental health is something that doesn't, we don't speak about it like that. We really don't think about it like that, bro. See, when dudes stress over things they can't control, it seeps into your mental. It does something to you. It makes you weak. This is why a lot of dudes shame, blame, and complain, dog. Because they're stressing over something that they can't control. If things are going to be this way, then they're just going to be this way. But not, not, not to me, though. To the outside world? Okay, go ahead. Why do you think I tell you dudes, a chick don't like you, a chick rejects you? Okay, get her the hell up out of here. She ain't about to be a attention seeker around me because I can't control her. I can't change that about her. She wants to be an attention seeker. We'll go seek attention from somebody else because it ain't going to be me. I'm not a sucker. I'm not going to sit over here and stress it. Oh, my God, why didn't she kiss me? Oh, my God, why didn't she want to come over? Oh, my God, why didn't she do this? Oh, my God, why is she acting like this? Why? Why would you do that? Because you're stressing. But when you stress, what comes from stress? What positivity, like what positive, what positive action comes from stress? Absolutely nothing. Just worry, just doubt, just fear. That's all that comes from that. That's why a lot of dudes need to let go of the stress. And any past trauma, I'm going to say it again, anything that you left in the past, that stupid ass baggage, let it go. I'm tired of this, bro. Dudes carry their baggage with them through life instead of letting it fuel them to become better. They're always bitching and moaning and complaining. Oh, well, this happened to me when I was younger, so now it makes me think this way. Bro, get in touch with that shit and use it to fuel you. Stop stressing over things that you can't control. It happened, it's over with, it's done with. You're a man. And that's what I'm going to say about that. Men's mental health is very important, okay? You will literally grow sick when you keep worrying about things that you cannot change or control. Remember that. So now we're going to move into the next part of the live stream. How to stay disciplined. And I'm getting cutthroat. I'm getting cutthroat. Matter of fact, let me answer the chat before I start going off because I'm about to get cutthroat, bro. Okay, Gene K says, I'm 22, I'm over 25K, I got over 25K saved up, a car, and I dress, I wanted to start my dating life, any advice? In college as well, still a virgin. Mm, for you, don't even worry about it, bro. Don't even worry about it, don't even, I'm 22, I have over 25K saved up, a car, and I dress, I wanted to start my dating life. Any advice? Okay, this is the best advice I'm going to give you. Do not fall for a chick, okay? I'm going to put the phone down. Brother, 22 years old, 25K saved. You are in a great position. A great position. Turn that 25 into 100,000. So I don't care if it takes you to your 25. Turn that 25K into 100,000. If you want to deal with women and have sex with them, Listen, be direct with them. Don't beat around the bush with them. Never take a woman serious, okay? Right now, do not take any woman serious. You've got 25K saved. I'm talking to myself right now as if I'm, I'm you. Because when I was 22 years old, I was a knucklehead. I got, I got women and stuff like that, but I was not in this position, okay? Worry about what you got going on. Turn, okay, so here's the thing about saving money. When you have a nest egg, like how you have 25, 
I don't know, for some reason to me, it's easier to put more money there rather than just starting with nothing. It, that's always been my experience with money. That's why I got so hyped off of this. You have 25K, brother, turn that shit into 50, then turn it into 75, then turn it into 100. These women are not special, bro. This is the best advice I'm going to give you. These women are not special. These women are not special. I repeat, they're not special. You are in, bro, you are in such a great position for 22 years old, okay? Be direct with these women. Don't go out of your way for these women. Do not be a simp or a sucker because you said you're still a virgin, okay? That's cool. I'm glad you found this channel. Thank you for being a part of this so you can get the game early. So you're a virgin. Makes no difference. Bottle that shit up and sell it. That's game. I said that in my other live. I'm going to repeat it again. You're a virgin. Don't look at it as a negative thing. Bottle that shit up and sell it. I got this virginity. I got this virginity for sale. Who's the highest bidder on this shit? And that's how you move around. Confident. Don't let that all my virgin shit get to your head. Okay? Because when you act like that, a woman can, she's easily able to run game on you. You have savings. You got things going on for yourself. I don't know what you're in college for. Brother, stick to the script. Turn that 25K into 100K. These chicks can wait, bro. These chicks can wait. Unless you're into like going to a college party where everybody's having fun and then you get a chick off of that. But even still, don't. Stay on your grind, bro. Antonio Martinez dated a female for a year and a half. Then she dumped me because my jealousy, anger. A year later, she came back, took her back. She said I was worth it because I have goals and my anger don't matter. Well, she dumped me again. This is a perfect teachable moment. Thank you for this. Antonio, thank you for just providing me with content. Okay? So this is why I always say when a situation is done between you and a woman, just let it be done. When you go no contact, don't talk to her again. Why do you want to talk to her again? Because, see, you're, you just miss, you miss this chick. You have FOMO. You have the fear of missing out. That's what it's called, okay? So when a woman runs game on you, you let it go. You say, I'm not going to be putting up with this attention seeker. She comes back around. All that's going to happen is she's going to play games again. So if you get with a chick, she wants to leave for whatever reason, you get back with her, she's just going to leave for another reason again. You already had an experience with this chick. Let it go. Go after a new chick. I'm telling you, this is prime example of you dealing with a chick. She goes away. You're still trying to deal with her again. And then it just goes to shit anyway. Let them go, bro. But thank you, Antonio. Miguel A says idolizing equals simps. I mean, yeah, man, like. You know, dudes even simp for other dudes, which is crazy. That like saying that sentence out loud is crazy, but it happens. It's true. Liam says, I got posters of myself in my room. I'm not going to lie, bro. When I was doing the, uh, my fitness company, uh, I think that was like a year after I got in shape. I made a bunch of posters of myself, like with that logo and put them everywhere in my home gym and shit, bro. I only I look at myself like that, dude. Hey, Gus, the artist, follow me on Instagram. It's Justin J underscore. Send me a DM and book a one on one call because you've just been sending a bunch of messages in the chat and I can tell you really need some help. J J A O B says. Justin, you are doing a great job. It's only a matter of time when you hit 100K. I recommend you also build a website by the time. Thank you for the advice, and I'm not worried about the subscribers, brother. But thank you for that. Tyler Hero says, remember, there's only one you, and that's what will make you stand out. If you try to be something you're not, people will notice. Trust me, I've seen it at work from different coworkers. And if I see it, the women do too. That's what I'm saying. Uh, that's what I try to explain to dudes a lot of the times. I'm just a guy. So when I notice that you're not on point, you think a woman can't notice that? That's why I'm always saying, when I'm coming direct at you, that's why I always have to say it like, I'm not coming at you guys. I just need to be this direct so you can understand. Who would you rather have? 
me talking to you direct like this, or even when I joke on dudes, would you rather have me laughing, right? Because that's nothing. Or would you have a chick joking on you, laughing at you, looking at you like you're a dumbass? What's gonna sting more? Eric Gonzalez says, let's go brothers, let's go. Okay, Antonio Martinez, it's been a year and a half and she kind of did try to weigh back, try, wait, she did try to weigh her back again. We bumped into each other, she wanted to see me, I ignored the second bump. We bumped, what? You told her not to text anymore, we taking her, what? We and her family making it to seem like I'm the problem. Bro, why are you talking about this chick? Why? Why are you talking about this chick? You think that she, yo, I'm sorry to do this, but I have to explain something to you guys, right? I know you, you, you ask for questions and stuff, but just imagine her right now. Do you think she's on a female's live asking about you? Okay, you told her not to text you no more, so why are you talking about her? So even though she's not here, you're still talking about her. You told her not to text. You told her not to text you anymore. Yet you're still talking about her, which signals to me you want her to text you deep down inside, bro. Yeah, Antonio caught feelings. That's why. Antonio, listen. This is you're, 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 you're triggered, bro. Why are you even responding? Why are you even responding? If you don't give a shit, you won't respond. You know the same way how I say when a hater comes in the the chat and they're like saying all this stuff about me. I'm just like, okay, but why are you here if you don't like me? No, no, no. I already gave you my opinion. You just keep talking. Remember the, remember the list. And if it's that important, like I keep saying, Justin J underscore, we can jump on a one-on-one -on -one calling where it's just me and you for an hour. You don't have to do this texting thing. But it shouldn't be that important, right? Because you don't care. All right. Now, how, where is it? How to stay disciplined. Let's get cutthroat with this shit. How to stay disciplined. This is all going to come down to how bad do you really want it, bro? How bad do you really want to be successful? How bad do you really want to make it? How bad do you want to beat the addiction? How bad do you want to beat the vices? How bad do you want to love yourself? How bad do you want to stop caring about what everybody else thinks about you? How bad do you want to be a leader? How bad? Because a lot of you don't want it bad enough. How do I quit smoking weed? How do I do this? How do I do this? Dude, if I could hold your hand, I would. If I could, I would. You know, I would, I would be there with you telling you exactly what to do, exactly what to say, but that, it doesn't work like that, brother. You have to listen and take what I'm saying and go out and apply it. Once you see that things work, you become so laser focused. You have no choice but to stay disciplined. Okay, so what's your story? Everybody get, get, uh, get in the chat. Try to write something real quick. What is your story? Where did you come from? What hard times? Okay, just get in the chat and tell me what adversity, what adversity did you have to overcome? And I can pretty much get a gist of what, where your story is going. Because I know my story, bro. I know my story. And this is exactly why I stay disciplined. I know where I came from and I know where I'm at. I know I never want to go backwards. I know I never want to be a loser again. I know I never want to be fat again. I know I never want to be an alcoholic dude like that again. How I used to drink and get like plastered and shit like that. I know I never want to hurt people for no reason again. I know I don't want to be a piece of shit again. That's how I stay disciplined. I know I don't want to smoke weed and have no life and have no job and all this goofy shit. I know that. That's why I stay disciplined. What, what's your story? 
People are always asking, how do you stay disciplined? And I seen somebody, uh, I didn't go over it, but I have it in my head. Somebody asked, how do you keep this energy that you always have on a consistent basis? You know why? That's another thing. Everybody thinks they're depressed. I used to be depressed. I used to be depressed. I think about all that shit, and I'm not that same person anymore. That's how I stay self-disciplined. That's how I show myself self-discipline, and that's how I stay disciplined. See, when you're disciplined, people are going to look at you in the world and think you're a weirdo. You're an outsider. You know why? Because most people aren't disciplined. So if you're asking how to stay disciplined, you're one of the people on the outside. The reason why a lot of dudes don't know how to stay disciplined is because you're not trying to get out of your comfort zone. You're not trying to try something different. The moment you try something different and you see that it works and you like the shit, you love it, you continue on with that, right? And you understand this is what's best for me. And it's not best for me to break this. You're going to stay disciplined. You're going to stay disciplined. You have no choice. But see, when you don't believe in yourself, you don't put yourself first. It's like everything on this list, bro. When you don't put yourself first, when you're not unapologetically yourself, when you don't invest in yourself and bet on yourself, when you're not worried about stacking the bag up, what else we got here? When you're trying to chit chat and act like you know everything, right? When you're trying to negotiate and shit, when you're trying to chase women, when you're trying to stress over things that you can't control, you're never going to stay disciplined. You're never going to stay disciplined. Now, do you understand why I say put yourself first? Focus on what you got going on? Because when you do that, automatically you stay self. Automatically you stay disciplined, bro. Because you understand that you are all you have to fall back on. Therefore, you are a house. You have What does a house need? It needs a strong foundation. You know, a storm can come through. Maybe the house will get, you know, messed up a little bit, but the foundation is so strong, the house ain't going nowhere. Now, another house that has a weak ass foundation, the storm could come through and blow the damn house away because the house has a weak foundation. How do you see yourself? How do you see yourself? Are you going to weather the storm? You got to start asking yourself these questions. Like I said, in life, there's winners and there's losers. So what side are you going to be on, bro? It's just that simple. What side are you going to be on? Telling you right now, a lot of dudes are not disciplined. They don't have six to seven months of rent saved up. They don't have any credit. They don't have a car. They don't have a reliable place to stay. They don't have anything going on for themselves, but they worried about how can I get a girl? How can I talk to a girl? How can I do this with a girl? How can I sleep with a girl without a place? How can I uh, improve on this? I'm improve on this? Bro, improve on your life, bro. You worry about all this other goofy shit. That's exactly why people can't stay disciplined. Stick to the script. LC, start a YouTube channel, brother. Tate says, I'm a winner, trying to be better than I was yesterday. Exactly. Because, see, when you come from a place of... You're, you weren't a winner before, right? Now, all of a sudden, you start stacking up these W's. And you're like, damn, I'm winning out here. Like, this shit is crazy. Like, I'm really that dude. There ain't no turning back. There's really no turning back. But see, the whole part of it is you have to start winning. Most dudes don't want to get up and do something. You have to put your fucking best foot forward and start doing something. Get some type of motion. Once you start seeing... That your life is going in a better direction, you have no choice but to stay disciplined. See what I mean about damn everything always comes back full circle, bro. When I'm talking, see what I said when I see what I mean when I said you have to bet on yourself. But a part of betting on yourself, there's a burden of performance on your shoulders. But you want to put that on your shoulders. You want to put that on your shoulders. You want to because with that with that weight on your shoulders, you can't fail. You're literally putting pressure on yourself to succeed because you're betting every, yo, you're all in on yourself. So you're putting that pressure on you. 
You got to make it. You got to succeed. You got to fight through the adversity, the hard times, all that shit. And that's going to keep you disciplined. But see, people always want an easy way out. There is no easy way out. Hey, Justin, how can I gain muscle even though, you know, um, you know, I plateaued and it seems like I'm not gaining anymore. Bro, you got to eat chicken and broccoli until that shit hurts. You got to fucking drink protein shakes till that shit hurts, bro. There's no easy way around this shit. Hey, Justin, how can I stack more money even though my feet hurt from working long hours? You got to work more hours and soak your feet and get some, uh, like, different soles for your shoes. There's no easy way around this shit, bro. Around anything. Anybody who tells you that they had an overnight come up, it's bullshit. What are you, trust fund baby? And then, and then you can't even shame that because their parents did the right thing with their money. But other than that, nobody had no overnight success, even if they try to paint it like that. People been grinding for years, bro. Staying down for the cause. Really putting in that work to get to where they want to be at in life. So why is it that everybody else could do that, but you can't do that? Staying disciplined, see this list, these two things, they tie, they tie together because, see, if you follow these rules, you will easily stay disciplined. You will easily, I don't care about what anybody else has going on. If that shit doesn't beget me more success, more money, they're not trying to come in and add to my situation or what I have going on, kick rocks. Get the hell up out of here. Because when I invite other people in my life, here's another, here's another thing, you have to be you have to know yourself, bro. You have to understand that people work in patterns of behavior. People have patterns of behaviors. So, okay, my past pattern of behaviors was as soon as I let somebody into my life, that was a straight knucklehead. That was not on, not about shit, not on anything, right? I would start falling into that type of frame. You understand? Now I'm more strong-minded, so I just don't allow people around me like that anyway who don't have the same mindset as me. People think I'm cutthroat. It is what it is. I don't want to hang around kids. I don't want to hang around indecisive people. If anything, I want to hang around other masculine men that are, they have a vision for their life. They're goal oriented. They don't even got time to be friends like that because they're on their mission. But everybody be wanting these friends and shit. Why? Nine times out of 10, your friends don't help you stay disciplined. So, and shout out to my boys that are gym bros. Like if y'all go to the gym together, you're hitting the weights together. Um, you guys are dieting together, you do shit like that, then yeah, you know, those are the type of friends. Okay, if you're into stock trading and stuff like that, and you got a friend that's a, a stock trader as well, and he gives you advice, and he tells you things that are about to happen, and where you need, what, like, gives you advice on what to do and where to move shit, cool. You guys are like-minded. You guys are both staying disciplined. You guys are multiplying your money, flipping money, cool. But for all those other people, it's, 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 it's insane to me how people care about what other people think about themselves, but that mindset will lead you to not being disciplined. The hell you care? The key to staying disciplined is having a vision. Most people don't have vision. Most people have a dream and like $1 in their pocket. But most people don't have a vision. Fuck a dream. You gotta have a vision that you already see that it's possible. Let me let you dudes in on a secret. I knew from the first YouTube video that I made when I hit record, I didn't know it, I would be, the, I would get this like this much traction, but I knew I was gonna get traction. I knew I was gonna get into the partner program. I knew I was gonna be able to monetize the shit because, bro, I've been through so much shit in my life. I got so many stories. I've been on one side, now I'm on the other side. How the hell can anybody not relate to me? How? That's just common sense. But I saw everything unfolding, like I saw everything. That's why I never really, I didn't really think of it as, will this work, will it not work? I knew it would work, I just didn't know to what degree it would work. Do you understand about that vision? You understand? When I first got my body in shape, I had kind of an idea of what I wanted to look like, but then after like the final transformation, I was like, I was looking at myself in the mirror like, holy fuck. Like, you know what I mean? Because I had a vision and I still over exceeded my expectations of, of how far I could push the limits. Anything, bro, anything you want to put your mind to, you can, you can do it, but you have to stay disciplined. And this is why a lot of people don't think shit is real. And even advice that I spit or other people spit, well, that's not true. That'll never work. 
You don't understand because you're not disciplined. It's like we're talking two completely different languages. If you were disciplined, you would, you would understand like, damn, everything he's saying is a fact. Or, you know, people uh, disagree sometimes. So, you know, I agree with most of what he says. You know, this thing I don't agree with, but mostly he spits facts. Yeah, because you've stayed down, you've stayed disciplined. Uh, one disciplined person knows another disciplined person. It's like how I say in the videos, right? If you're a valuable person and you see yourself as value, uh, valuable, maybe you spend like a couple, you have a couple conversations with somebody that's on their grind and you're like, that's a valuable motherfucker right there. There's a lot to learn from this dude right there. I'm telling you. Stay disciplined, bro. It does nothing but put you in a better situation. Don't be one of these guys that are having a hard time trying to stay disciplined. How to trust money-making schemes when there's scams out there? Bro, you don't need a scheme to make money, bro. A lot of you guys don't understand when I say you got to bottle yourself up like a drug and sell it. You're the brand. You should be able to sell salt to a slug. You're the brand, bro. But staying disciplined, bro, you got to get out there and make shit happen for yourself. Start living life on your own terms. Start living a quality life. And see, living a quality life, let me tell you something. I was just about to answer uh, these chats, but listen. Living a structured life, living a quality life, caring about the quality of how you want your life, all stems from being disciplined. All stems from being, being disciplined. You got to have your shit a certain way. You got to know how you like things. You have to be organized in a certain type of way. You have to have deadlines. You have to be in order. That takes discipline, bro. You think people are like that? No. Most dudes get dressed like this. They go in their closet, go in the dirty hamper, pick up something, smell it, and put it on. Stop it. Stop it. You think dude's got a calendar and they're like checking days off or writing goals down like did this today, got this out the way or already had them pre-planned and then like crossed them off. Do you think dudes do that? Do you think dudes are like, oh shit, I got to uh, finish my macros, you know? Oh shit, like, oh, I got two hours before sleep. Let me get my last shake in and shit because I remember I've been hitting my meals on every hour that I was supposed to. You think most dudes are on that shit? Fuck no. You got to stay down. You got to stay disciplined. How, how else are you supposed to instruct somebody else and instruct somebody else and have them on your timing? How? So you have to be disciplined. You can never tell somebody else what to do if you're not disciplined. Oh, here we go. It was like, I don't know how I'd be coming up with this shit out of nowhere. So see, this is the thing too. Most dudes want to instruct the chick, lead a chick, all this shit. They're not even disciplined. So how the hell could you do that? How could you tell a chick, instruct her and lead her? If you're not consistent enough to be disciplined, really think about that. See, even when this live shuts off for everybody that watches it on the replay, some of the stuff I say, I want you to sit there and really think about it. Like, damn, he had a point with that. How can you instruct a woman and tell a woman exactly what you want her to do and how to be on your program and on your timing if you can't even live your, live your life as a, you know, a structured dude with discipline? telling you you're gonna understand that trying to be the best version that you can be every day is exactly that's how you stay disciplined if you're cool and you're content with being regular and being where you're at you've already stacked up enough w's cool then you're probably gonna lose that discipline at some point but if you have this constant hunger for more if you have this constant just you're all it's you versus you you're always in competition with yourself. That's why I said don't idolize others because I'm always in competition with myself. Like, damn, I can't kick my feet up. I got more work to do. I know I can do better than this shit right now. You know, that's what keeps me disciplined because I know if I fall off, this isn't the end all be all. I'm not done yet. So I have to stay disciplined. I have to keep that hunger. I have to keep that drive. That's how you stay disciplined. You keep chasing something. You fall in love with something. You have a passion. Something that means more to you than, than anything. And you stick with that shit and you water it and you nurture it like a plant. And you know that if you, if you deter or if you get off the tracks and you just start moving all stupid 
and you start doing things that are out of your character and stuff, you know that that's going to affect you. Remember what I said, you are a brand. You should be looking at yourself like you're a drug that's bottled up and super potent. And the moment that you stop being disciplined, that drug gets stepped on, it gets stepped on, it gets stepped on, it gets passed from this dude to this chick to this dude. Now this person's stepping on it again. And then you're just a rebranded, repackaged drug that has no potency. You lost your potency. And now nobody even wants you anymore because they're on to the next. Always think about that when you're thinking about giving up. When you're thinking about, oh, this is hard for me. Boo-hoo for you, motherfucker. Boo-hoo. It's either you're going to stay disciplined and stick to the script or you're going to get left behind. And I'm not getting left behind, bro. I'm going down with I'm going down with one of the people that people, you know, you know how people think, yo, this person is important. That's me. This, th that's me, bro. And, and see, this is what I, I mean about having a purpose and a passion. Right. So if I stop being disciplined, how can I turn around and lie to you dudes and give you advice if I stop being disciplined? How? It's my job to help you. I'm a servant to the community. I don't know if anybody knows what that means. Look it up. How could I keep preaching and, or keep making this, this content to help dudes with their life if I stop being disciplined? You see what I mean? You got to pick something that you're passionate about. Water that shit, nurture that shit like a plant, watch it grow, take care of it. And it's a part of you, so you're taking care of yourself. And you understand that, yo, bro, I cannot fail. I cannot slack. But see, most dudes don't have any passion, ambition, any drive, bro. Yes, Tyler. So, you know, to make a long story short, bro, how to stay disciplined is just to take yourself seriously, have your life in order, find something that you fall in love with that you will not give up for anything. Make that shit your purpose. Every day work on that shit. Brand yourself. And up here, positive self-talk. Can't be none of this negative crybaby bullshit. Get to work. Put in the work because nobody's coming to save you, bro. But if you're cool being average, if you're cool you know, moving to the beat of someone else's drum, believing in what everything what society says, and you're cool with, you know, eating your little Lunchables or whatever the fuck, cool. But I'm letting you know right now, the real are gonna make it and the fake are getting left behind. So how you stay disciplined is by taking yourself seriously and understanding that you stand levels above the average dude. And if you feel like you're the average dude, nine times out of 10, you're not gonna stay disciplined. And that's just how it is. I'm gonna answer some of the chat though right now. Okay, any, Sir Kali says, any leadership advice? I just gave, I gave you leadership advice right now, bro. You gotta take yourself seriously. You gotta have a schedule, kind of like an itinerary. You have to do things properly. You have to hold yourself to the same standard that you hold everyone else to and literally live by that shit. Hold yourself to the same standard that you hold everybody else to Make sure that your shit is proper. Make sure that you're in order. Make sure that you're a good man, not a good guy, a, a nice guy, a good man, a stand-up man, right? And then you, you will find that you will lead people. Look, whenever I walk into a situation, job, chick, anything, right? It's almost like I'm thrown into a leadership position because I'm so sure of who I am. I'm so sure of the direction I'm going in. That people have no choice but to fall under me. Or people, other people that are leaders have no choice but to respect me like that. Even if I have no position or no title. They look at me like I'm a leader or I'm the next in line to go to. You understand? I, I can't explain to you how many jobs that I've had where I've been thrown into a leadership position. The point where people are asking me, hey, are you the manager? No, why would you ask me that? Because you're handling this place like you own the place. I'm telling you, bro. But it all starts with how you lead yourself. How you are. J. 
J-A-O-B, can you break your genetic curse? I don't know what you mean. Even if it comes down to body shape and body type, yes, that shit is bullshit. It's, 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 literally, a, it's literally a cop out, bro. If everyone in your family is an employee, can you become a successful entrepreneur? Thanks in advance. Yes. What are you talking about? Yes. Yes. What the? Yo, bro. What? Here's what I'm saying. You're looking for an immediate cop out. What does what they do have to do with you? What, what does what they do have to do with what you want to do? What? What? Nothing. This is what I mean about staying disciplined. Have a plan in your head. Get to the shit. Don't let anybody stand in your way. Not your family's curse, your leg, your, your whatever, bro. Get to it. Whatever. You want to be an entrepreneur? Go be an entrepreneur. You want to be a, a, bro, just an all-around hustler? Go out there. You got to hustle. If you don't hustle, you don't eat. Stop worrying about other people and put yourself first. A family curse? What the hell are you talking about, bro? Okay, here's another thing I want to get into. With this whole thing, you know why I'm disciplined? Because when they think of my last name, bro, I want them to remember me. I don't want them to remember my dad. I don't want them to remember my grandpa. I want them to fucking remember me. That's why I stay disciplined. You understand me? Like, I don't think you guys understand when I be saying, like, how bad do you really want it, bro? I don't got, I'm not trying to impress no fucking body, bro. I'm trying to make sure when I go out this world on my tombstone, it says some dope shit. And I'm going to really be that person who is talking about. Not when they be lying. He was this good person and he was this, man, he was a, he wasn't nothing. Gus, all right, yo, Gus, you mad funny. We 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 gonna we we're gonna get to you right now. Gus said, I know this sounds stupid. This girl blocked me and she unblocked me. What does this mean? You know, you ever seen the video of that old white dude? You're not that guy. You're not that guy. That's what that means. I wish I had money to pay my debt. I'm tired of free game. Look, man, I'm never, you know, it is what it is, bro. Look, look, Jeff S. Overcoming depression, suicide, and homelessness. I never gave up. Look at Jeff Strampel. Overcoming depression, suicide, Homelessness, I never gave up. You ever hear of tribes? Like somebody's your tribe? That dude right there who commented that shit? My tribe. Been through all this shit. Never gave up. I really want you to understand that shit, bro. When everybody's out here complaining and stuff like that, and he never gave up, and I guarantee you he's disciplined. Never counted himself out. When he was at his lowest, picked himself back up off the floor. Got to work. This is what I'm talking about, bro. I love seeing this shit. All right, it's official. Gus, the artist, is a troll. We have a troll in the chat. Antonio Martinez, discipline. I'm here at the gym at this moment, even though I don't want to be here. But all the bad, I'm, I'm taking it out on the weights. Exactly. The, see, the, the best part about being disciplined and when you finally lock in, you understand that on the days where you don't want to do shit, so what? It has to get done. Stop being a bitch, bro. Not talking to you, Antonio. I'm just saying in general. For everybody who's always asking, well, when you don't want to work out and you're in that slump, how do you get over it? Bro, because I'm not being a bitch. I already came. Bro, did you hear me say in that video? The reason why I understand bitch assness and weak behavior is because I used to be a bitch ass dude with weak behavior. You think I'm ever going back to that shit? So that's why I stay disciplined. I don't care about feelings, bro. I care about what's real, facts, and getting shit done. I don't care about how I feel. 
Fuck is this feeling shit? I just thought that was really good. That was a teachable moment. Like, even when you feel like you don't want to do something, if it's your duty to do it, you have to do it. Puya says, I was fat and a loser two years ago. I lost 30 kg and going to the gym now for a year. I try getting more disciplined every day, but I still have a long way to go. Brother, at least you started. At least you started, brother. Keep moving forward. Forward progress, bro. LC says, yes, but if you determine it, yeah, but if you determine it, your success based on what your family achieved, you're always going to be holding yourself back. Yeah, and you're just going to be living in somebody else's shadows. You'll never be great. <laughs> You'll never be great living in somebody else's shadow, so. SSJ Lama says, I feel like the issue, here we go, I feel like, I think that, I'm going to correct you, I think that the issue for me, and I may speak for other people, is that feeling of loneliness and missing out. And there's another part of the thing, why are you speaking for other people, bro? Remember what I said? In my experience, in my experience, you know, from what I've been through, and then you proceed with the sentence, you don't need to speak for everybody, man. That feeling of loneliness loneliness and missing out. What are you missing out on? What are you missing out on? What are you missing out on, bro? Why are you not successful? Why? Let that keep you up at night. Let you worry about that shit late at night. When you're wondering about why things are the way, ask yourself, why am I not successful? Why, why, why is it my life business-wise and shit going the way I want it to go? That's the only thing you need to be stressed about. Bro, being lonely and missing out. Did you not just hear me shout out Jeff? I think that's his name, Jeff. Homelessness, all that shit, all the, being homeless, all that shit still overcame it. So you mean to tell me? Where'd you go, bro? You mean to tell me this feeling of loneliness and, you know, all right, there we go. Jeff Strampel. Overcoming depression, suicide, homelessness. I never gave up. Now let's move it here. I feel, and then SSJ Lama says, I feel like the issue for me, and I may speak for other people, is that feeling of loneliness and missing out. Bro, do you hear yourself? You got inspiration, motivation in the chat. Let this mindset go, bro. You're never going to stay disciplined with this mindset. You were born a winner, bro. See, yo, bro, I gotta flip your, I gotta flip the dude, your, your minds, bro. I'm stuttering. This is how bad I want to get this shit out, bro. When you dudes have this mindset of women are born with their value, you're insane. You're a man. You're a fucking dude. You were born valuable from the day you came out of your mother. So why do you disappoint yourself by having a loser's mentality? You were born a winner. You just choose to be a loser. You choose to not be disciplined. You choose to let this shit infect your brain. Why? You were born a winner. Realize who you are. Recognize who you are, bro. Loneliness and missing out. On what? Everybody's a loser out in life anyway. Like 60, 70% of people in life are losers that you're going to meet. They ain't about shit. So what are you missing out on, bro? SSJ Llama, bro, start thinking highly of yourself, bro. Love yourself. Respect yourself. Forget the fear of missing out, bro. Jeff Strampel says, I didn't realize how much potential I had and how easy the competition is. Until I practice consistent discipline. It really does work if you just make an effort. So what'd you say, SSJ? That's the dude who's been through all of that stuff. Hopefully you can take that and use that as some motivation, brother. And rewire that mindset, bro. 
You're not missing out on anything. Big G says, I started small, like reading my Bible every day. That's another thing. I definitely agree. When I was working, you know how I tell you guys all the time, I was working like 65 hours a week. You know, at my first job, I made it a big thing. I would, I would be listening to like Christian Bridge Radio on my way to work, and I would read a couple pages out of my Bible. And um, yeah, I would read a couple pages out of my Bible, and it really started my day off like the right way. Okay, chat is going off. Hold on. Ralphie Smith was good, bro. J A O B Justin. Oh, John Doe. Shout out John Doe. What's good, bro? J A O B says Justin, I'm 145 at 511, but I want to become 165 lean within the year. Is it possible? Thanks in advance. Yes. Yes, it's very possible, but here's the thing. You are going to have to eat until it hurts. It depends on how fast that you want to gain this muscle, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to eat three times a day and do two shakes a day because I already, I already know what's going on here. You have a fast metabolism. It feels like you can eat anything and it doesn't stick to you, right? So it's very hard for you to gain weight. You are going to have to eat. Well, you can do two, three, but I would recommend doing three meals a day, two shakes. You put that weight on fast. Christian M says, self-belief and mindset is so underrated. Yes, it is. Jeff Strampel, again, the Bible says that faith without work is dead. God does not reward laziness. That's what I'm talking about, bro. It's like, dude, no matter how you want to look at it, you know, if you don't go after what you want and keep putting in consistent work, it's never going to happen, bro. It's never going to happen. A lot of people see, a lot of people believe in the overnight success. A lot of people believe these stories that people tell, but it's all a crock of uh, shit, bro. Any tips on how to become an entrepreneur? See, this is what I mean when I say, I literally told you what you have to do when I say you have to brand yourself, act like you're a drug, bottle yourself up, and sell it, sell yourself to people. So whatever it is that you like to do, hey, yo, okay, mad funny, yo, I was thinking the same thing, bro. I'm like, damn, this dude, he don't leave, like, he, he back again. So, yeah, fast metabolism is not what you want, bro, like, because... I'll explain maybe at another time, but I want to I want to stick to the script right here with this. You know, any advice on how to become an entrepreneur, bro? Listen, you have to bottle yourself up, make yourself a drug and become so potent that everybody wants a hit. Everybody can learn from you. OK, I've tried different things in my life. I tried music. I went to school for music, actually. Um. I tried, you know, starting a fitness brand, you know, I, my attention got taken away from there. I had to work. I started working 65, like damn near like 70 hours. Uh, and then, you know, that took over my shit. So then I tried, uh, what else did I try? Oh, I tried a meal prepping service. I tried that. It did. It worked. It, it started to take off. It didn't really work. Okay. Then I started YouTube. Okay. This works. But now I'm, I'm transitioning from YouTube to being more of a, uh, a consultant, like I'm, I'm doing like the one-on-ones, I'm more of a teacher in some sorts, okay? It's all about bottling yourself up and selling yourself. Okay, now when we go to the, the speaking in front of people, you know, I've been good at that my whole life, bro. I'm not afraid the same way I speak to you guys. This is what I'm talking about, the fear of rejection. What the hell is that? I can get in front of an auditorium full of people and start talking, make that shit sound good and knock it out the park. I've always had a vocabulary. I've always been that dude, you know, but I did go through a part of my life where I was introverted. I've always been a dude who people listen to. Always, even when I was a fucking knucklehead, people would listen to me. I've always had this leadership about me. I just never gave myself enough credit. So do you understand where I'm going with this? So it starts off, you see you have these good traits about you. You see you have these things, these tools that you're always sharpening in your arsenal, that you put in your arsenal, that even when you don't think of it, think outside the box. What are you good at? What do you like to do? What are you known for? What do people compliment you on the most? Okay. Use that shit to your advantage, bottle it up, and sell this shit, bro. 
I used to sell meal preps. You know? I used to do all types of shit, bro. But it wasn't until I got to this, started clicking. But that's what it is. You have to be a jack of all trades. That's what being an entrepreneur is. You do different things. You know how to do different things. One is gonna stick. Now, after one sticks, right? Now, after one, okay, this is heavy game, okay? After one thing sticks, and you see that going in a positive direction, now you take everything else that you were good at, repackage that shit up, and use this that drives the traffic to do all that shit now again. Because now, all that shit that failed, nobody was paying attention. Now they're paying attention to this one thing, okay, now you repackage that shit, Bring it to the for the bring it to the front so everybody can see it. Now, oh, he does more than just this one singular thing. Oh, he does all these other things. He's good at this one thing, so he must be good at all these other things. I just broke that down, y'all. I'm even thinking about it. I watch a lot of my videos as if I'm not me, and I'll be like, damn, bro, you killed that shit. Everything I just told you right now, I'm thinking in my mind, damn, bro, and you gave that to him for free. Damn, bro, he don't even know. You could be good at something that you don't even view special like that, and you're probably thinking right now, damn, I can sell this shit. And it's for free just because you're good at it. Crazy, bro. Tyler Hero, there's a saying, if you don't have your house in order, you have no right trying to place order outside your wall, something like that. I like that. Marquise, Marquise says, what up, Jay? Just stopping to support the brotherhood. That's what's up, bro. We here. Cozy Rel, my boy talking. Stay disciplined. Stay him. That's a fact. Dash 77 Gaming, how did how did your dialogue become so good? I'd be stuttering on my words at times. Uh, I read a lot of books. Um, when I don't know what a word means, but I'm, I'm very interested in the word, I like the way it sounds, I actually go and look it up. So when I look up the meaning of a new word, I put it into my cat. Uh, I put it into, what's the word I'm looking for? I put it into my vocabulary, then I start using it until I get comfortable with it. And then I've done that to the point where I, I do that with so many words where they just flow. And I'm a person that's really clear and concise. So when you're not clear and concise and you're always worried about what to say, that's what's causing you to stutter. You're worrying about what other people are going to think about what you're going to say, or you don't know exactly what you want to say. But as soon as you know what you want to say and you have a large uh, variety of words to choose from, it becomes easy. Tate said, him gang, him gang. John Doe with the consistency. Legacy, the honey. I already know that's when I was talking about the last name. SSJ said, not all heroes wear capes, man. Nah, I know. Daniel, hold on. Okay, Daniel CODM says, please, big bro, I'm going through a lot. I made a mistake and it spoiled my reputation in my city. How can I overcome this? I thought of suicidal thoughts. I've been having suicidal thoughts lately and I'm 18 from Sweden. Okay, so Daniel, this is what I'm gonna need you to do. Go follow me on Instagram, Justin J underscore, and we're gonna get on camera and there's no charge. We're gonna talk for a little bit and we're gonna get this situated. Don't do anything that I wouldn't do, okay? just. Take a deep breath, calm down, collect your thoughts, and we will get on the call, right? We will, we will talk to each other. Don't do anything that you're gonna regret. Just chill. And me and you are gonna talk, no charge, bro. No charge, we're gonna talk. Slim TV says, yeah, gotta pack those feelings up like clothes before you're going on a trip. <laughs> yeah, feelings are, they're not going to get you anywhere. They should drive you, if anything. Truth First 313 says, nice hoodie, Jay. Appreciate that, brother. Designed it myself. Um, T. 
Dark Leaf says, lost 30 pounds. The last 15 is a real bitch to lose trying to cut but slow and steady, I guess. Yo, I'm telling you, when you plateau, bro, you get so pissed off because it's like, yo, what the hell am I doing wrong? I already lost all this weight. Why is it not working anymore? Um... Hold on. Big G, keep your head up, bro. You move back in with your mom. It's cool, bro. Stack the paper up. Stack the, stack the bread up. Get the bag up, bro. Don't, don't focus on, you know, anything else but getting the money up. And don't hang out with the losers. Rubber Man says there is an article that says 10 million men, 10 million men subscribe to AI partners. Something along those lines. Why you care? It ain't you, right? SSJ Llama, thank you. See? Saying it like that, my issue is not a real issue. There you go. See, you're learning. Shout out to Rubber Man. Uh, shout out to Rubber Man for sending that support through. Um, to Daniel C O D M, man. We gotta stick together, bro. Yo, Justin, okay, A-E-T-O. Yo, Justin, I went from being evicted, broke, breaking up with my girl and living in my car for the last four months to making 10K in the last two weeks. I watch all your videos. They helped me keep going, brother. SSJ. I, I, I understand that you already acknowledged that, right? But listen, bro, you got to take inspiration, man. You got to... You got to really know that this shit is real. Your problems that you think are very large, they're very minuscule. They're not a problem. They're minute. They're not, they're not big at all, bro. The fear of missing out and loneliness. Do you hear all this stuff people are saying they overcame? Come on, bro. And this is a brotherhood. This is a brotherhood. That's what I'm saying. Find inspiration in what, in what these guys are saying in the chat. We're brothers here, bro. We all been through hard times. But it always makes you better. It's always for the better, bro. B Swan says, how to tell the girls you're not interested respectfully to rotate them after you spit game on a date to smash. See, this is what I'm talking about. Bro, why can't you just tell chicks? Why are you so afraid of them? Like, they're going to beat you up. And there you go. Here we go. They be getting real clingy and catching feelings too. Bro, here, 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 this is what I'm saying, bro. It's on you. That's why they're getting clingy and catching feelings. Don't you not hear me when I talk? My main chick right now, if I tell her, hey, I'm going on a date with this chick, uh, Cindy. My main chick is not even going to catch an attitude with me. She's not even going to say, what the fuck? We're doing so good, blah, blah, blah. No, because this has been addressed from the beginning. You need to earn your spot. I'm not giving any commitment out. And I will let you know when I do so, when I want to. But now and any time after this right now, no, I will let you know. So if I want to do something and, and even mess with another chick, she can't say shit because I put this in line already. You dudes are always doing this shit. These chicks are getting clingy. They're getting this. No, 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 no. You haven't told them the rundown from the beginning. And you know why, B Swan? I, 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 I hear that you hear me, but you need to understand this shit, bro. You're not telling them the rundown from the beginning because you're outcome dependent. You want the box so bad that you're not willing to tell a chick what's your program. You're willing, you're, see when I, when I said that on the live, dudes are throwing pieces in the air and they say, oh, they're all falling into place. No, they won't. This is why chicks will slash your tires. This is why chicks will send you all these messages, all these paragraphs, acting crazy, pulling up to your job because you're not being straight direct. 
No, 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 no. There's no I have, but they're trying to lock me down. Yo, Beast One, you ain't that special, dude. You're not special, bro. So what do you save it, bro? If you told the chicks off rip, this is what it is, they have no choice but to respect that. Or you keep it pushing. Stop it, bro. Okay, okay, so then chicks view you as a boyfriend material guy. Chicks view you, uh, I'm going to spin it. Since you want to keep doing this goofy shit, okay. So, no, 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 no. It's just that I'm this, like, this, this cool ass dude that chicks get clingy to. Well, okay, well then they see you as boyfriend material, which means you ain't shit anyway. How about that? They see you as boyfriend material. I know I'm right, but you don't want to accept it. That's why I just had to come at you like that. Just fucking accept it. I'm trying to, Daniel C-O-D-M also says, I'm trying to bulk up, but I mainly gain face fat. It's so depressing. Please, any take on that? Bro, all protein, low carb. All protein, low carb. Understand that. Your face will still be chiseled, bro. That shit ain't going nowhere. J-A-O-B says, Justin, is the call via Instagram or via Zoom? If I book tomorrow, it could be either or, but I usually do it through Instagram. I have both. Marquise Marquise says you have to be a savage in these days like that. That's a fact. That's a hundred percent facts. All right, guys, wrapping this live up. I'm glad you guys joined me for this live. Listen, that was the, you know, 10 rules. Every man must follow in life and how to stay disciplined. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, you are him and they are them. Keep saying that shit every day. And when you say it, believe it as you're saying it. Look in the mirror. Love yourself. Never take this life for granted because any day it could be all over. So while you're here, you have to put your best foot forward to become the best version of yourself that you can. And if you think that that's so out of your reach, try this. Just be better than you were the day before, even if it's by that much. All right. I gave you guys the 10 rules. You know, you can find, I would advise you to follow all of them. But if you resonate with a couple that you like more than the other ones, follow them. It's okay. And if you need some guidance, all right, Justin J underscore, hit me up. Follow me on Instagram. We can get on a one-on-one -on -one call. If you ever just need somebody to talk to, hit me up, guys. But remember, stay positive. You are him and they are them. Let's go, boys. Let's go.